Sutter, this is my wife Debbie. Hi, how are you? You got Tambor over there, our assistant. She's helping out today. <laughs> Alright gang, today is uh, chest and bicep. We'll be working chest and biceps today. Today's Tuesday, October 2nd. I've, I'm leaving in 20, 20 days to the contest. The contest is October 27th and 28th in uh, Jeju, Korea for the road championships, the road amateur championships. So I've got approximately uh, 27 more days or 26 more days, somewhere on there, to kick it up and get this body ready to go. So let's uh, take it to it. How are you, Laurie? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, ready to roll? Yes. Let's start off on your favorite movement today. I'm ready. Give me to the back. Okay. King Charles will do it. Ready. So we got a lot of guys who blitz it. Uh, I'm gonna go one more, maybe one more after this one. One or two more after this. Oh, I got it. Come on. Come on. Let's go, Chris. Come on. Let me, let me go. Up. 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 Nice, Chris. Nice, nice. Up. 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 competition in New York and um, Vegas for the USA's and we're training with Chris for his competition in Mr. Universe. <laughs> um, because I own my own company I can set my hours so <laughs> it works out pretty good. But um, I, uh, Chris's wife Debbie is my training partner and um, they're two of the best. I really enjoy working out with them. Uh, knowledge, definitely. Um, their knowledge, the way um, they live their lives. Um, they believe in, in what they train and teach people and um, it definitely affects affects you as a person, you know, to to be better in the way you um, uh, live your life and, and train, and um, it's all about balance, having balance in your life. Oh uh, yeah. Let's see what we got here. Come on, universe. All you are, you still. Okay, Jack. Up. Drive. Let's go. Push up. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Lightweight. Lightweight. Up. Cut. Up. All you. Up. 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 Come on, yo. 
okay? Hook. Hook. Nice. Hook. Drive. Hook. 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 Gotta move, baby, gotta move. Chris's wife, and we've known each other for about, oh, I think it's about eight, nine years now, eight, nine years, and I hired him, uh, I got to meet him and get to know him, because I hired him as my trainer when I was competing in fitness competitions, uh, when I was competing at the national level, and um, we just got to know each other for a while, and uh, started hanging out, and I started working for him, and then um, we've actually been married now for almost two years. It'll be two years in October 23rd. Chris is a um, extremely passionate, uh, generous, motivated, um, one of the best people I know. Easy, Chester. Easy. Good, Larry. Come on. Uh, Name's Kuta. I've been training with Chris for about uh, four years or so, uh, mainly on Saturdays. Uh, we do back together, we have our own group. Uh, occasionally I'll come in on throughout the weekday to help him with chest and shoulders. Uh, I've known Chris, I've known, I've known of Chris since I was in high school, probably about 90, 93, 94. Uh, I've seen him train hard in the gym every day. Um, trains hard, he's healthy, uh, he's a good person. Uh, lots of fans and I um, uh, enjoy working out with him. Um, and we push each other pretty hard. Um, he's constantly giving it his, his 100% and um, I'm happy that he won the overall at the 07 Team Universe, and I wish him the best of luck at the Team Universe in Korea. and I'm a hairstylist. I'm Chris and Debbie's hairstylist. I own my own business. I've been training with Chris about three years now. Um, I've been his training partner for two and a half years. I enjoy training with Chris. Um, he's given me the opportunity to enter my first contest last year, the Paradise Cup, which I placed first in the lightweight novice division. For the contest, Chris helped me with my diet, my posing, my choreography for my um, posing routine. Um, he was there for me throughout the whole thing. Um, I'm happy to be with him through the universe and for him going to Korea in a few weeks.
Let's go, Shiny Boy. Oh, 
So I've been using this uh, for the Team Universe. It's a uh, straight waxy maze with some glutamine. And I'm uh, trying to keep as much size as possible here. So I take this drink, I work out. It doesn't have any flavor. It actually tastes uh, kind of like cornstarch with water. Pretty gross, but uh, whatever works, right?
Well, from my style, I usually wear about two, three shirts, even though we're in Hawaii. I just have a tendency to like to stay warm, and um, rarely do I show any type of body part while I'm training. I just try to stay focused and visualize what I'm trying to accomplish in the gym, and has to get a major pump as quickly as possible. Right now, I'm pretty lean, so I'm not trying to uh, torture the muscle. I'm just trying to get blood in there and uh, keep it in there and try to maintain as much muscle size as possible. As you can see that uh, I'm keeping my reps down to maybe eight to 10 reps. I'm not going overboard. I don't wanna string out like I usually do heading into the show. I'm trying to keep my fullness. As you heard my uh, posing goal set, I need to say as full as possible and chisel it down only at the end, the last three days. Um, I'm maintaining some good decency of uh, strength, so I feel pretty good. I'm not gonna push it. I know this is for the video, but I'm going to stay within myself and uh, just train the way I should be training for this show and not get carried away. I don't want to get injured at this time. I'm not no Ronnie Coleman is going to put up 800 pounds. I'm only 168 pounds and uh, what you see is what you get. 100% is natural. Today's about, uh, say about 82 in Hawaii and uh, it stays here like this year round. Uh, Maybe it's just not my style to walk around with a tank top on. I know the other bodybuilders feel the same way. You know, they hopefully they seem modest and uh, humble. <laughs> a lot of people say when the camera's on, I kind of come out of the shell, but uh, it's showtime. This is a big show for me. It's a goal that I've always tried to accomplish and I came close with it with 1994 and 95, coming as close to second place. But I feel I got a more mature physique this year. And uh, I'm gonna take it to it. Take it to Korea. Hopefully bring back uh, the US a gold medal. I got one more set in this barbell curl. I'm gonna go up to the 90s for another set of 10. Uh, I'm gonna play with it. We'll stay within uh, good control and just feel these arms getting blown up as soon as my wife gets out of the way. Come on, Chatsa. Seen that Sean Marie? <laughs> Sean Marie's my buddy. We competed against each other in uh, the Teen Nationals back in 95. Wait, you 85, I'm sorry. And that's how long I've been at it. Since 85. My first competition was back in 83. So I've been at it this quite some time now. Oh, 
I just got one more set of this uh, creature curl. I'm gonna do some abdominals and then some cardio. I'll be doing 40 minutes of cardio today. I do uh, cardio five times a week at 40 minute sessions, that's about it. Like I said, I'm trying to preserve as much as I can. And I felt like 40 minutes is uh, just enough. Uh, just once a day, once a day. Oh, yeah. 
Gang, that's all she wrote today. That's day one, chest and bicep and abs. We'll be back tomorrow for some. What are we training tomorrow, gang? I think we're doing some. What? I think we're doing some deadlifts and some back, maybe some deadlifts and odds and ends. Keeping us side, so I deadlift down to the end of to the show, just for the overall mass. Since I'm a small guy. <laughs> Thank you, and we'll be back tomorrow. Do that cardio 40 minutes five times a week. Get it shredded. I'm just keeping this on manual pace. And this bike right here is a weird angle where it hits the quad at a certain angle, so it really puts pressure on the medialis when I'm pushing my feet out, catching the inner teardrop. So, as you notice, I'm pushing down like a leg press. I'm doing millions and millions of leg presses. It's a really tough bike. I usually like to do this in the treadmill right behind me. Those are my two favorites. So I'm gonna just stick with the bike for 40 minutes and call it a day. Yeah. Ah. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings but the elliptical is uh, probably the easiest cardio equipment in the gym. Some may bigger to differ, but for me it's like um, not intense enough for cardio, so I kind of stay away from the elliptical. 
They made that for people with bad knees. So it's a, just a gliding motion, simulating a running action. I'm pretty fortunate to, to have some good knees, so I'm just gonna stick with this bike right here. Go this way. Very good. Oh, perfect. I am the Alta Aliata. Five weeks every day, five days a week. I like it. I never did it before. I thought it was men's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, Chris is, uh, you know, so much energy and so precise, and so I trust him. So I come every day. And I bring my son. We have two different problems. I have to lose weight and he has to gain muscle. So I have to become, you know, like more tough like that. And he has to have the muscle. So we have two different problems, but he is taking care of both. go pick up my kids my two dogs <laughs> How yummy is that, huh? <laughs> Eat some jas jasmine rice, and I limit myself to one huge of rice and the way to get it in there is to kind of smash it down so you can get a little more and pack it there and that's all I'm eating for dinner tonight is it's, it's all the carbs I'm allowed is one cup of rice so this is the key to the entire thing is uh, getting this green tea and making chow <laughs> So I'm gonna put my green tea bag on my rice. That's dinner. My protein and my fibrous carbs. 
and then I got my tea and rice in the micro which is my carbohydrates for tonight and that's what I eat for dinner that's what I've been eating for the last seven months yummy so I'm alternating within steak and chicken every day Monday Wednesday Friday is uh, 12 ounces of steak for lunch and dinner with green beans and then another cup of rice and on Tuesday Thursday Saturdays and Sundays I'm going with uh, 12 ounces of chicken for lunch and dinner also with another cup of rice at each meal this is my favorite though tea and rice green tea and rice if you haven't have a tried it give it a try so after a long day of work I come home and uh, look forward to this meal like I said I've been doing this for the last seven months chicken breast and tea rice mmm mmm As bodybuilders say, they don't eat for taste, they eat for fuel. Fuel their, fuel their bodies. But I need some taste, so tomorrow I'll show you how to marinate this chicken. I'll show you how I cook this chicken. So you can tolerate it for seven months. <laughs> As you can see, my wife um, gave, gave up after, uh, I think, three months on the diet and decided to buy food tonight with her glass of Chardonnay. <laughs> so here, see you, her sunshine. Cheers, baby. Cheers, baby. <laughs> I just got, what do we have, 20... Six more days to go. Yep. Six, six more days. Don't mind me. This is unbelievable right here. A little more of that green tea in there. Nice and hot. Jasmine rice. Green tea. Perfect. So for the final meal of the night, it's my uh, old. It's all egg whites. I'm gonna be doing um 24 egg whites. I'm gonna eat 12 in about five minutes, and I'm gonna save 12 for tomorrow's breakfast. So that means I'm eating 24 eggs every single day for the last again seven months. And the reason why I don't use egg beaters or Egg substitute is because um, of price, much cheaper. And I found the easiest way to do this is get down and dirty. <laughs> That's one. Good source of protein. But it's quick and easy to make and very cheap. I say there's about though three grams in every one, so that's perfect for tonight. And all you need is a good spatula, a good Teflon pan, Pam, and a good spatula. Let's get that yolk out of there. We need no, we don't need no fat. Because as they say, you can't flex fat. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is just lay that all out like this. I'm going to turn off the heat. Take it off the stove. I'm just gonna let it cook just like that for about a minute. I'm gonna get a Tupperware container for tomorrow. 
Let's see. That'll work. I'm trying to make life as simple as possible. I showed you the nice plates. Now for tonight, since I already washed all the dishes, <laughs> I got the paper plate for tonight. And there you go, that's 12 egg whites. And this other half is going on this plate. And I'm eating that tonight. That's gonna be my last meal for the night. Yummy. I like to give it a little kick to my egg whites. So I'm gonna be putting some of this Kikoman soy sauce on my eggs, which is super high in sodium. And egg whites are very high in sodium. And that's exactly what I want uh, going into the show. And all I do three days off from the contest is eliminate my egg whites and the sodium, which is a soy sauce. And I'm gonna replace that with boiled chicken breasts and jump in on distilled water. And that's gonna kinda of shock my body and shrink back my skin. So what you see in the gym is um, tons of sodium. That's why I'm sweating so much in the gym. And that's what makes the muscles contract. So that's what I need right now is a high sodium um, diet as we prepare. I'm still three and a half weeks out, so I gotta keep my sodium content pretty high. And that's how uh, I'm getting my energy in the gym. Eat a scoop of peanut butter with each meal. And the reason why I'm doing that now is because um, I'm trying to keep as much muscle mass on myself as possible. I dieted for a long time this year and I felt myself stringing out the last uh, three, four weeks ago. And then my trainer said, uh, Eric Yamashita said, add some fats into my diet, which I've been doing every meal. And this here is a lifesaver. It not only tastes good, but it's actually helping myself get a little harder and fuller and bigger. So tomorrow with a posing session, you'll take a look and I guarantee you this right here is the trick going into the show. I'll probably eliminate this maybe three days off from the competition also to really get myself grainy and hard. But as for now, I still need some fats in me so I don't get that uh, stringy, depleted look. I don't want that right now. I need that full uh, muscle bellies and I think this right here is keeping me going. So for my last meal of the night, it's going to be my 12 egg whites with my soy sauce and a large scoop of peanut butter. So, as you can see, I'm not starving but I'm hungry. <laughs> I could eat 50 more of these with no problem. Hmm. Every last bite. Okay. That's it. And here's snack. So this is just plain organic dry roasted peanuts with sea salt and that's about how much I'm going to be eating every meal. Mmm. Wow. That's a lifesaver right here. A lot of people in the gym see me eating peanut butter and said, I thought you're on a diet, you know? I keep telling them that everybody's body's um, different and my metabolism is just so quick now. And if I didn't eat any types of fats, I'd probably end up in the bantamweight class. <laughs> and I don't want that. So this is keeping my weight up. I probably were about 168 today, which is fairly low. 
towards the completed 165. That's a cutoff. Hmm. That's it. I could eat that whole jar though. But then I'll end up in the heavyweight class. <laughs> so until tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., which will be the exact same meal, but I'll mix that peanut butter into my oatmeal will be the only difference. And let me tell you, that is good. Oatmeal and peanut butter, yummy. In fact, that's what I carb up on and uh, fat load on backstage and probably leading into the show. That's a good combination for me, oatmeal and peanut butter. So I'm using what I'm gonna be using straight into the show. And um, hopefully it works again this time. So to tomorrow, over and out. Good morning. Morning. Another morning, another day. So these are what we're gonna be cooking up today, so you just gotta flip them over in the ice box. Yummy. That's for lunch. I'm gonna use the cover today, Mitz. <laughs> I'm a little late. It's gonna be five o'clock, past five o'clock today, before I eat my breakfast, so. Three quarters of a cup. Of water. Get that a little hot. Done. Two minutes. And I set it up for the day. So I got all my protein powders all set. My spoon for my peanut butter, chicken. spinach, put in my cup of jasmine white rice, my cup, my packed cup of jasmine rice, right onto lunch today. Maybe a little bit more. <laughs> Secret recipe. I'm gonna put my trusty traveling peanut butter right down on the bottom. That goes right there. And we can't get food poisoning, so my ice pack goes right on top of my chicken. I usually put a couple bottle of waters in there. And I am set for the day. My oatmeal should be ready. But today is Thursday. I don't do anything on Thursday except for rest. Meaning from the gym, not from work. As you will see. So, usually on my rest days, when I'm not doing any type of cardio or any type of weight training, it's just to make my muscles and my body recuperate for the next workout. Well, then it's a couple workouts, which is Saturday, Friday and Saturday. So I usually, Taking only half a peanut butter with every meal instead of a full. So Thursdays, uh, I'm gonna go with just half of what I use with every meal. It's 
a little hot. Oh, I can already taste it. Today I'm going to listen to the news though. sees any other dog she's gonna run so He's great. I'm a doctor and I'm also a patient. I had a heart problem. Uh -huh. So I trust Chris and he does a great job. And he brought me back to health after my operation. He's great. Oh, he's the best. He's the best uh, trainer. He's a, the best bodybuilder. You want to learn from the best, you know? Yeah, he keeps me alive, this guy. Every morning. Yeah. Are you, are you? Three more, three more. Ah. Push. Last two. Last two. Gotta finish. Ah. Up. One more time. To the heel. We ah. can work today. One year. I love it. He's a great guy. He's inspiring and it's fun. It's a great gym. He's happy. He stays focused with you. I can't say enough good things. I've had a number I would easily recommend him. No, I don't want to recommend him. I want him to myself. Uh, my stepson recommended him and um, really liked him. And so he talked my husband and I into coming down and giving him a try. And we love him. We haven't changed. Today I'm a little 
tired of blending it up with the protein shake and the shaker bottle, so I'm gonna ask my uh, niece who's working behind the counter here to blend this up for me professionally in a blender. Nicole, can you blend this up for me with ice water, please? Okay. <laughs> Wait, just... Just with ice water. Do you want ice in it? Yes, yeah. water. Definitely. How much water? Uh, 18 ounces. Wait, I have to wash this one. Oh, you don't have a clean one? I don't know where to have to put it. All right, all right, wash it up first. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that mitts. One blender, they got two blenders going on here. I think it's faster if I did my own. That's way better than the shaker bottle mitts. Yeah. Get it off. Domo arigato. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't charge me for the cup. Hawaii, the hurricane is known. <laughs> Morning. I'm going to be using this cart today to. Uh, you are cooking. You're gonna be really excited. Watch this. Time to go bye bye. Time to go bye bye. You guys wanna go bye bye? Yes? Okay. My daddy put this over here. Okay, you guys wanna go bye bye? Yes? This one? Okay, come. Okay, you wanna go bye bye? We're gonna see the doggies. We're gonna see the doggies. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, inside. Inside. trainer he's the best he's very uh, strict he always take care of his uh, clients he never he never turned back to us <laughs> and he always take care of us very very good <laughs> oh yes yes everything 
and especially when I was pregnant, <laughs> my body get to normal. He take care of uh, my body very, very good. <laughs> good. No T rice today. It's a sad day. But it's 11 o'clock, I need to eat. Okay, I'm gonna eat this much. Don't take nothing. I'm gonna put a little bit more there. <laughs> That's why his muscles stay full. Cool. He get more energy stores for the peanut butter. No. He needs that, that fat. Keep his muscles a little bit more energy stores for his training. So, up his calories. Keep his muscles full. Drop. So when we pull the water out, he'll be ready. Just trying to maintain his condition for the next two weeks. Then by the time we go to Korea, he'll be he'll be 15, 20% better than the than the Team Universe. So, he'll be ready though. You gotta watch it, you gotta watch his face. The face comes something else. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a little more quiet, then you know. <laughs> Definitely gonna need this big pot. And I'm gonna need one more. That's some more. He's gonna be cooking. Ounce. Ham spray. Chicken. Steak. That's all I need. I'm ready to go. I need my keys. So I'm gonna show you folks where I do my cooking. All right, here we go. So since the steaks cook really quickly, I do the chickens first. So, I know. And Eric said I need to get a little bit sun while I'm cooking. <laughs> I might as well get some color. So I'll be taking a, just a, nothing wrong with relaxing, right Mitz? So let me show you where I usually do my tanning. Usually on the weekends, this is where I hang out and do my tanning, right by the pool. But today it looks overcast, so we're not gonna be tanning today. Oh, miss, this chicken's been working out. Look how big that chicken was. The smoke coming on it. That's what you want. So these steaks, these are gonna be cooked real quickly. I put it right on the top there. But to tell you the truth, this is a, a recipe that I just came up with for the Team Universe of this year. I know my sodium had to be really high. And for 2003, when I last competed, I used it. I used mustard, which is high in uh, sodium. Also, a mustard shoyu combination, which worked fine. But I wanted to kick it up a notch this year and just keep it just to show you and splendor. I really like the combination. So, 
this is what I came up with and I love ginger like I said so I've been doing this for the last six months I've been down here for the last every Sunday <laughs> for the last six months and uh, it tastes really really good I could eat this every single day which I have been and it does doesn't bother me I look forward to my meals it's enjoyable see folks on the mainland if you folks do have Kikuman show you I know you guys got Splenda and I know you guys got ginger so give it a try you know marinate it for a day and put it on a grill I know everybody has a grill I know every bodybuilder has a grill they need to have a grill because it kind of drips all the fat out of the food and uh, you'll be amazed how well this tastes you can actually even oh smell that you know and the reason why I put the steaks on the top here is because if I put it on the bottom, it'll cook really quickly. Um, I, I want to get it to look just like that, with a smoke flavor, but yet not overdoing the steak. Now these steaks are going to cook up real quickly. You got to watch them. Look at that, look at that. Oh my goodness. That's gonna be good. No pulling, push, push. Can't get leaner than that, Mitz. That's that's lean. They're perfect. Medium well. Just the way I like it. I don't like rare. I like my steaks medium well. Little pink on the inside, but still not talking to me, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So what I wanna do is I wanna let that cool off, okay? Gonna let that cool off. Look at that. Perfect. perfect. Looking outside of the windows here and see perfect sun. Perfect sun. <laughs> and I know I need to go downstairs and tan. So that's why I'm rushing. <laughs> so I can do all this and make sure that I get some sun. That's a lot of bird. That's one. There you go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all these baggies. Ziploc bags. So like I say, I take in 12 ounces of steak for lunch and 12 ounces for dinner. So watch this. Okay, right, that's three, six, nine, eleven, twelve, one eighth, a little over, it's okay. I get this, 
put it in my baggie here. I get all the air out. I zip it up. And that's one meal ready to go. Alright? So I said roughly 12 ounces of chicken is maybe about two to three chicken breasts. I said about three chicken breasts. That's a lot of chicken in there. So this is my meal. I got day one. I got two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Seven days is one week. I used up all the chicken breasts. I used up all the steaks. And that's gonna survive me to uh, next week, where I do it all over again. The marination, the cooking, the weighing of the food, the bagging of the food. So this week I'm set. I got my spinach already made. All I need to do every day is uh, make new rice. And there you go. Milk. I hear him pounding. What's up? Light, light. Third, going. Pick it up. Let's go. Mary, last one. Gosh, uh, since February. Six, so a year and a half, a little over a year and a half. Uh, he's very good at motivation and getting us to do uh, successfully for the most part, but not always. Uh, and he lets us know when we when we do poorly. <laughs> uh, well, first, uh, uh, why a personal trainer? And that's because when we don't have a personal trainer, we tend to come up with reasons why we can't make it to the gym more often. So if we have a trainer, we have a commitment and we'll go. Uh, Chris is actually uh, the third trainer we worked with and um, the thing that uh, I like about Chris is that he has uh, uh, got a zest for, for uh, what he does, he, he, he certainly enjoys it and it's um, infectious, it gets us excited about it. He is very good and patient at explaining what we're doing and why we're doing it. I have no body awareness when I move my body a certain way, I have no idea what's happening. He explains what's going on and, and now I think I've got it. Um, I've really noticed that I have much more control over my body and what it does and what I can and can't do with him than with um, anyone else. He's just a good guy.
about five years ago. They offered us three sessions with a trainer. We worked with him for a while and then he actually moved to the mainland. And then we had another um, trainer and he actually went to a different gym. He was really into the cardio and bosking and we were really looking more for weight training and biometrics and more, um, you know, stability and um, help with balance, things like that. So you not only get the muscle workout, but you get biometrics, which was the hopping up and down the stairs, which I don't do very well, but, um, and then, uh, you know, cardio activities, but really a lot of uh, nutrition information. That's really helped me. I've lost about 15 pounds. Um, the, the one thing, my big goal when I started working out with him was to do push-ups and even though they don't aren't as low as he would like, I can actually do real push-ups for the first time. So that was great. Now I'm working on chin-ups. One more, one more. One more, one more. Last one for the camera. Pull it down, up and drive. Come on, baby. Come on. That's it. Good. Okay, rest. Right. Dinner. Starving. Let's go. I think I see some curry katsu here. I see a uh, fried shrimp and maybe some oyakudon buri. This, this is one of my favorite with miso soup. Oh. Tonight, go to the restaurant, but we still have the purple cooler in hand. Oh, what can I say? This is my katsu right here. This is my tonkatsu right here. Yeah. Katsu curry. This is from Physique Bodywear. I order online bodybuilding clothes. And I guess they ran out of one item, so he put uh, Hurricane sold out. Gave you upgrade to 776 at no cost. Whatever that means. Oh, so I have oh. sweatpants. Oh, that's good. This is for Lee Haney. Big, <laughs> big shirt. Oh, okay. You're going to be so women. Oh, my God. Mitts. That's nice, but that's too big. What's this? Oh my God. What is this? Oh, this is for you, honey. I bought this one for you. I wanted to dress. Yeah, I bought that one for you. I'm you serious. Did I, not. Did. I did. I ordered that one. What is a dress? I did order it. <laughs>
No more meals. Oh, peanut butter. Races the mids. Is it coming out? But, but the double bicep. Coming out? Double bicep. Double bicep. <laughs> Just took a shot of it, so I'm sweating again now. <laughs> but like you said, pose, 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 right? That's it, Mitz. We're ready to roll. Tomorrow, 1.30. Oh my God. <laughs> We're practicing for tomorrow. We're practicing, right, Mitz? <laughs> Morning, gang. Morning. It's uh, five in the morning, and uh, this is how I start my day. Those are the eggs we uh, we made last night. It's three quarters of a cup of oatmeal. Put some carbs today. Can't forget that Kikoman show you. Some cinnamon for some flavor. No, it's just for taste, you know, like I said last night, some bodybuilders eat for fuel, which I do also, but sometimes you got to kick it up a notch, you know. So that's what I'm using. Two packets of Splenda every morning, uh, a dash of uh, cinnamon, and definitely, is that too much today? We got a post today, so I think we're going to need to go a little bit more. <laughs> and uh, heaping tablespoon of peanut butter. So again, that's it. That's breakfast right there with my packet of supplements, which has an array of uh, amino acids and uh, some liver tablets, some vi essential vitamins, uh, some minerals. And all I do is whip this baby up. And like I said, if you haven't tried that, oops. You need to try that out because that's that is the bomb right there. For okay, I'm ready to eat. First meal of the day is always the best.
The consistency has to be good. <laughs> no, it's just to cool it down faster so I can eat a lot quicker. I'm starving. Well, right now, this oatmeal peanut butter mm, helps me throughout the day. I'll be eating um, four meals and I'm taking two protein shakes. So you can call that uh, six meals a day. Just like I said, uh, some HMB, some Trevistan, some liver tablets there, a mineral, essential vitamin. I think it's uh, glucosamine sulfate because of the joints. <laughs> so that's eating now with every breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay, so breakfast is done, and now I need to take my doggy to go to the bathroom. You ready to go to down? Ready to go down? Yeah. Okay, baby. Good morning to you too. Okay. You ready to go? You ready to go? Yes. You ready to go, sugar baby? Okay. Let's go. Let's go, baby. I know you're all excited. Yeah, you're excited. Did you it? Good girl. You ready to go? Okay. Alrighty. Yes. This is the lobby area. Okay, here we go. Come on. Too much snacks. Not good. Not good, baby. Okay. You know the routine, baby. I need to wipe your feet. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, good job.
Chris is fantastic. He's a great guy. He's always in great shape. It's fun to be with. You know, obviously role model, eats healthy. You know, he's become a great friend. I've trained with him for like seven, eight years now. So I'm his uh, oldest surviving client. The key word there is surviving. This is Wendell. How you doing? How are you? Wendell is Lori's husband. You know the one I was training yesterday? That's his her husband. Oh, okay. Yeah. Chris has a big heart, uh, incredibly kind human being, very motivational, very knowledgeable, expert in his field. Um, he's the best in my mind. <laughs> Did it really good. Crunch is next one though. Right on. One more time. The hardest part. Well, to get I need to go get a spoon from a juice bar. So that was my second meal. Another a shake um, taken at eight o'clock. It consisted of about 60 grams of protein. It's about 30 grams of carbohydrates. And I'm gonna take one more tablespoon of my trick to get me that peanut butter and hopefully uh, it works for me today. My next meal is going to be at 11 o'clock which is lunch so that will hold me over to then. Mitch this is a small spoon. I need, I need about two or three of these. Mm. That's good. So we're here at my second home, Gold's Gym. And as you can see, uh, a couple months ago, my partner and I, Kathy Seals back there, purchased this uh, cafe. So it's called the uh, Hawaiian Oh, it's, it's called the Hurricane Cafe and Juice Bar. So this is where I send all my clients to to get their food. And I think we did a bang up job with it. See, I uh, kind of painted it all up. And so when I get off my diet and I'm not cooking, all I have to do is come over here and get my orders to Kathy. She's gonna be picking up my meals for me. Uh, she's got an extensive menu here. Everything from smoothies to panini sandwiches. How's this one? Hurricane smoothies, huh? <laughs> Kathy, you want to give a little wave here? That's my partner, Kathy Sills. Hi, good morning. <laughs> and she does uh, everything back there. From cooking to ordering to everything. She's handling it. Taking care of the customers. <laughs> Taking care of the customers. Getting their protein for their workouts. <laughs> keeping them healthy with chicken breast and brown rice. So we take our first break today. We get to see the sun at least. <laughs> so usually on my breaks, Mitz, I'll head home real easy, you know, just that's why I love it. It's so convenient to live right there. 
I'll go home and we'll um, hopefully my wife went to pick up some chicken and steaks and I'm gonna show you guys how to marinate my steak and chicken and get it ready for the week for cooking this is my food for the week I prepare it all at once I cook it all at once and I wish I could eat it all at once <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna show you how to prepare my marinade so it's a lot more tolerable to eat Start off with this chicken breast right here. The straight, boneless, skinless chicken breast. And all I'm gonna do is put them in my Ziploc baggies. I'm gonna need about five or six of them. Make sure my hands are clean. Simple, fast, and effective. The next thing I'm gonna do is get my beefs going. I usually use um, either top rounds or London broils. Those are the leanest cuts. And I always trim off the visible fat. You see how there's marbling going on here? Even though I'm wasting a lot, I want to make sure that I'm not eating any of that fat there. So that's a nice piece right there. Right there. That's a pretty good slice. I want to make sure they get all that marbling off using top round or like I said, London broil. I should, I should, and it's really, here in Hawaii, I don't know why, but it's really hard to find filet mignon. Really hard. So I have a special friend that uh, works out at the Gold's Gym, and he's a butcher. So whenever I travel, I tell him to get me about 40 filet mignons ready, and then he would pre-package them for me. So that's what I do, and that, maybe that's the main reason why I don't go out and look for filet, because it's so hard to find here. Um, you know why? I don't know why, but they don't shelf it on the shelves. So this will work. This, these steaks will work. That won't work, but that'll work. No good, Mitz. This is no good. No good. You're not gonna eat this. That's no good. I feel as though um, this is what makes or break a bodybuilder when it comes down to competition and getting in shape. It's right here where it all counts. Um, everybody, like I tell my clients, anybody can train. They can train till they turn blue and still not get the results. But the results are when you exit the gym and doing this other things like rest and recuperation, meal plannings, uh, making sure that you're eating on time. Those are the things that count. As for bodybuilders, that's so important. Um, I feel that's my forte. That's where I catch my competitors sleeping because they don't want to do this part. They'd rather go out and eat because of um, whether they're tired or just want something quick to eat. Um, and that's where I catch them. I know they're doing it. I've seen it being done, but uh, for the last 26 years, this is what caught me to where I am today, uh, making sure that my food are all prepared properly by myself. I don't let nobody else touch my food when it comes down to dieting. Yes, I do go out and eat in the off season, but when the diet starts, this is where it starts and ends, right here in my kitchen. I'm gonna show you how I marinate this thing, my chicken breasts and my steaks, so they're really yummy. And all it is is uh, a lot of ginger root. This is ginger root, which you can find in any local store. And all I do is chop up 
a whole bunch of them. Real easy, real simple. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to do this marinade. Okay, all I'm gonna do is put some of these in each bag. All my zeros in each bag. I love ginger. I love ginger. These two products this is my marinade. Simple, easy, and it tastes great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a cup of Splenda. A cup of Splenda. This is Kikoman soy sauce. And I'm gonna take that all the way up to Three cups of soy sauce. Well, actually, two cups because one cup was splendor. Next, I'm gonna do is uh, get a fork and mix it together. And all I'm gonna do is add some water, and I'm gonna take that all the way up to. Four cups. That's all I want to do. I'm mix it all together. Bring it over to my baggies. And I'm going to individually marinate each bag of chicken and steaks. Take all the air out, zip it all up. I guess if I was in a bodybuilder, I'd be working in a restaurant, I'm it. <laughs> I love eating and come to cooking. I love cooking too, so. Next thing you want to do is incorporate everything together. All the ginger and the soy sauce, split the base, get the ginger root all in there. One down. And six. There you go, gang. How simple, how fast? What did that take me? All of 25 minutes to do? All I'm gonna do is put this in the ice box for a day, and then I'm gonna show you how to cook this up tomorrow. This will cover me for the entire week. I'll uh, cook it downstairs on the sixth floor on my hibachi grill downstairs by the pool, and then we'll come back up and uh, I'll show you how to bag them all up. All right? That's Chris Faudel's way to marinate chicken and steaks. And the reason why I'm using that Kikuman soy sauce is again, to keep the sodium really high. And I don't think I was using too much Splenda. <laughs> that gives it a little sugary taste to it. So when we put it on the hibachi grill, it'll caramelize and uh, make this chicken and steaks really, really good. This is that marinated steak that we did Last week, so I still have some. That's 12 ounces. Heat that up. For about minute 30. And again, I could eat that whole rice pot, but then I would look like a sumo tori instead of a bodybuilder. And guess what's going on that rice? Yes, you guessed it. green tea bag, right on the top.
just like last night. Or Charles, okay? Yes, I cover it to cover it. <laughs> I got lazy. Heat that up. That there, folks, is uh, I was gonna say breakfast for champions, but it's eleven o'clock. So it's lunch for champions, and uh, hopefully this will give me a good deadlift day today. Because today is definitely a posing day at 3.30, and Eric said I need to be on my game today, so Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are steaks. I look even better than I did yesterday, I guarantee you, eating this meal. I like to fill up on fats and this will do that. I'm so hungry. I'll eat, I'll, I'll eat outside if you need me to. Mitz, I've been starving for the last six months. You guys need to try this. Mm. If I can get Sean ready to start eating tea rice, how's that, Mitz? Because he says it's all okay, and then something about paying the coordinator, but who's the coordinator, and when do you meet them, and Charlie something, I don't know. So I Small iced coffee, no ice. A grande coffee. Small. So what do you want? A lot of things going on. There's a red lens. I get to relax just a bit. Sip on my Joe and get ready to train again today. Like I said, I live in here. As you can see, the Kikoman show you is rocking. See that down there? <laughs> That's what you call the fishing pond or a swimming pool. So I know that uh, I'm getting enough sodium into my diet, actually excess. Otherwise, I won't be sweating like this. And uh, that's a good sign right now that I'm pouring sweat. So I know the sodium content is really high in my body. That's what I want every single day. This is part of my cardio. I do 40 minutes, five times a week, like I said. And I'm gonna be doing it uh, today before my workout so I can do my posing session after I train today. I may do half, a, half an hour a little more after, but I'm just trying to get warmed up for the heavy deadlifts today. Making sure that I'm totally warmed up. to the gym. <laughs> like I guess at age 41, <laughs> I need to take all precautions when I'm training, so I'm not taking nothing to chance this next three weeks. I'm gonna strap up and uh, hopefully survive this workout today. It is an odds and ends kind of workout. Um, I'm small in structure, there's no doubt about that. I'm not gonna go out there and mu out muscle anybody at this show, so my forte is my hardness, condition, and symmetry. But to keep that, I need to keep as much muscle size as possible. And while I'm dieting down, as I told you folks, that's why I'm keeping the peanut butter in and uh, 
one of the tricks that I do is I deadlift all the way down to the last week of the show. And that's my today. What we're gonna be doing is uh, we're gonna just open up with some deadlifts. We're gonna work on uh, keeping all that muscle mass, not only on my back, on my trapezius, but just overall size. And that's why I keep my deadlifts in for a separate day. And then we're gonna be doing some odds and ends, like some posterior deltoids, some back, some side laterals, just to keep the nice V taper. So I'm just, to them, just working on just keeping all the size on my body while I diet it down and die out this next three weeks in. So sit back and enjoy another Hawaiian Hurricane workout. use a double overhand grip if you notice uh, a lot of people use straps but I prefer not to use any straps why um, it just doesn't feel comfortable uh, let's see I use a double overhand the reason why I don't use a reverse grip is because when I was doing the reverse grip it's a lot easier but I was growing my latissimus dorsi on my left side the underhand grip more so my lat was growing a little bit more on my left side with the underhand grip so I changed it over to a double overhand uh, making sure that my lats were built symmetrical so anytime you reverse the grip if you're gonna deadlift make sure that you're always reversing it the opposite direction so your lats grow evenly so that's the reason why I deadlift with a double overhand so I don't have to worry about being unsymmetrical I want to be totally symmetrical the straps. See those? That's cheating. Big, 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 come on! Go! Drive! Drive! 
to make my last set probably do a drop set on this as you can see I don't use any straps why? that's cheating come on Bob every day every day go Come on, let's go. Come Come on, go. Go. Nothing, come on, go. 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 Come on, boss. Breathe, breathe. Come on, get in there. Lock it, grip. Go. Rip this. Go. Rip it. Up. Good. Come on. Try, breathe. Up. Drop. Good. Lock. All you. Let's go. Breathe. Lock. Up. Drink. Come on. Come on. Lock it out. Let's go. Legs. Come on. Try. Up. Up. Pull up. Hello? That's it, come on. Go you guys. Finish this, come on, up! Piece of cake. <laughs> From the armpit. Initial pull.
pasan. Uh. Ah, oh. the last that's it. We're to the armpit, that's it. Go ahead, up there. Okay, go. Mm hmm. Up there, squeeze. Up there, squeeze. Come on, up, squeeze. Come on, come on. Come on, baby, work. Work it up, work it up to me. Come on. Good. Hi. Good. Going to the main floor and hopefully nobody laughs because I got my shirt off. We don't do this here in Hawaii. Maybe in Los Angeles, yeah. Sean, we super set the start on. Nice up there. Come on, that was three. Come on, baby, right. Come on, four. Come on, these yeah. girls are training. Those girls are training. Let's go five again. Come on, baby. Up. Let's go. Up. Five. Come on, Ricky, baby. Come on, up it. Take my waxing mace. 
Okay, we're gonna go to the V bar. Keep our food on. Thanks. Okay? I like the thin one. The handlebars and stirrups. Milk. Calves. It's gonna finish off with some calves and some hyper extensions. A little more detail in the lower back. Work on my calves. Finish up the day.
You ain't done yet, you ain't done yet. Come on! I know they're training. I gotta train just as hard. But on the other hand, I gotta train smart too. I'm gonna do a couple more sets on the sit slide, the standing sets uh, sled. Then I'm gonna do 20 more minutes of cardio and I'm calling it a day until posing at 3.30. Let's finish this up.
Okay, guys. Thank you. This thing is sponsored by the peanut butter corporation. It's a smile for peanut butter. Hey man, so my name is Eric Yamashita. Uh, I have a personal training business, Eric Yamashita Personal Training, where I, me and my wife I have some trainers working for me. Uh, I do some contest prep, so nutritional and posing and just getting bodybuilders ready for, for bodybuilding contests. I competed in 21 shows from 1987 to 2002, and I've been taking the rest, so maybe I'll make a comeback one day. But right now, I just try to help people. And uh, I've been working with Chris Fowler for the last 24 weeks, getting ready for the Team Universe. Uh, about six weeks ago, and in three weeks we'll be going to the World Games in Jeju, Korea. So things are going really, really well. Really, really well. Uh, ever since I started bodybuilding, I really enjoyed being on stage, and I think a lot of bodybuilders, they get in great shape, but they don't present very well on stage. So I think if you're a good poser, it's better for the cameraman, better chance to get in magazines, and you really can show off your physique. It's like making a nice car and not painting it well. So I think posing is a very, very important part of the bodybuilding process. Chris is a good poser, so I just help him with technique and, and you know, exercises. And so the better his physique can be showed off with his, his, his you know, better posing practice. So we work a lot on posing, two, three times a week. Uh, most people don't understand how hard it is to do isometric posing. It's five times harder than any, any bodybuilding workout, but you'll find that you get a lot better muscle control. So you have an easier time on stage. You won't be so winded. Like I said, it's better for the photographers because you get better pictures and you can really, really show that you're a champ. So the true champions know how to hold the pose. They're the first one in the pose and the last one out of the pose. They're not the ones falling apart and sweating. So Chris trains hard, so he should look really, really good on stage. Uh, Chris just turned pro, but through his whole career, he's been a consummate professional. So it's really easy to work with someone. So he systematically changes small variables in his, in his dieting or his posing. And instead of arguing, he actually listens and he takes you know, constructive criticism very, very well. So I'll go and do my research. And my whole goal is to make him the best person best bodybuilder he can be. So every time I do something, it's all trying to make him a better, body, better bodybuilder. Some people don't have a, the ability to understand that, but Chris will take it, take it to heart, and realize we're just trying to have the same goal and make him a champion. We want to make him a world champion um, in October 27th, so bring home the gold to the USA. It's going to be good. USA hasn't brought a gold home in a long, long time. So I think, you know, people must realize that from amateur all the way to the pro level, posing is very, very important. That's the part that I think a lot of bodybuilders, they, they get in great shape, but they can't present very well on stage. So uh, this is an important part, and Chris does really well. So it's, a, it's an honor to work with him. Back. 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 
I didn't look as quite as good as I wanted to look today, but uh, I'm gonna stick with the same game plan. I know I got a lot more time to go. It's uh, another three and a half weeks, so. I'm gonna stick with the same plan. So it's steak tonight, back to chicken tomorrow. And again, we got my tea and rice and my dessert ready to go. 12 ounces of steak, green beans, Supplements, water, another day, another dinner, another meal. Green bills are cold. I didn't zap it. Mm. 
That's the best. And I'm not drunk, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get leaner than that. That's the reason why I took off all that fat. No gristle, no fat. There's only one thing left. Dessert. <laughs> so, uh, just another scoop of this. And uh, this whole gonna take in. Maybe a little less, since I didn't look too good today. Hmm. <laughs> Mmm, creamy, not crunchy, organic, not jiffy, <laughs> it's good, I promise I'll look better on Friday, we'll have a rest day tomorrow, no training, just work, but no training, no cardio tomorrow, we we'll go into the gym at 1.30 on Friday with we'll the shoulders and triceps and we'll pose again, see how we look. But this should do the trick. Mmm. Good girl. Good girl, baby girls. What did you me to do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, I'm gonna go for a second series. Uh, Good girl. You're gonna get a snack. Look at those pots. You got mail. Oh, here it is, fun track. Just a bit of water in this pot here. Mm -hmm. I don't like my spinach mushy. And when you put spinach on water, it gets kind of mushy. That's a little too much. I don't want that much water. I don't want the water touching my spinach. So I put a. Mushy? Yeah, mushy. Not mushy, mushy. That's hello, right? Mushy. Mushy. Like soggy. I don't like my spinach soggy. So I'm going to put a mm -hmm. colander in there. And I'm going to put that on there. I'm gonna use a cup of spinach per meal. So that's a lot of spinach because as you can see, when it comes out of there, it's gonna wilt down. You, you're talking about a cup of cooked spinach. Cooked spinach, a cup of cooked spinach. So I'm gonna do these two bags and that two bags probably will last me uh, maybe three days. Not even that, maybe, yeah, three days. Three, three days will give me um, six meals. I go through a lot of bags of spinach. So I'm just gonna do one, I'm gonna let that wilt down just a bit, cover that up, and then I'll throw that other bag right on top of it. For the egg whites, we're gonna do the same thing we did last night again. Here we go. That's one. and especially my pectorals where they're flattening out every single contest. So what I'm trying to do, if you notice my workout on yesterday, I didn't do that many repetitions. Maybe six, eight repetitions max for my chest because I can get the striations to go, but as far as pec fullness, every contest I suffer on my pectorals being flat. So this year I'm gonna do a different style. I'm gonna try and train my pecs with low repetition, little heavier poundage, and hopefully that works. And so far so good. I'm trying to keep them as much muscle size on my pecs as possible and still keep it as lean as possible. I'm constantly posing at home. I tell all my clients that, that I pose at home. I pose while I'm on the toilet. I pose while I'm driving. I'm posing while I'm cooking. 
So I'm not lying to all of you folks that I said post, post, post. And make sure that it just steams. This is going to take a while. I want to get that spinach all in there. So it's kind of like just steaming the spinach. So I want to keep all the nutrients in that spinach as much as possible. So I'm not going to boil the spinach. I'm just kind of like steaming the spinach. So I'm keeping as much nutrients as in there as possible. That is almost done. You don't want it in there too long. In fact, that's a little too long. That's okay. Okay, so that's one bag. And all we're going to be doing is plucking the next bag in there. Finish is done for the next two, three days. I'm gonna put some of that for, and it should be about a cup, so that the cup is a lot. See how much that is? That's for tomorrow's lunch right there. My 12 ounces of chicken, some spinach, and I tell you what, I'm gonna, so I don't forget, keep them on soy sauce. let that cool off just a bit before I put that in the ice box. I'm gonna cut this in half because that's 12 egg whites right there. <laughs> I'll give a little more for breakfast. Breakfast, lunch, spinach for two, three days, eight o'clock meal every day, off season, contest, 26 years, road championships. That's why I think I've got a shot at it. You know, Mitz, I think that's the reason why these bodybuilders go out to eat, because they need to do all this. But like I said, you can't trust the restaurants, man. You can't uh, put it in their hands, I'm telling you comes down to the wire and that could be between first and second, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not gonna leave that chance. I'm not gonna let that happen to me. It's either I blow it because of my own doing, then I can live with that. But if I got lazy and I went out to a restaurant because I was lazy, that would always be in the back of my mind, you know? That would always be in the back of mind if I somehow ended up in second place. I would maybe think about that uh, day that I got lazy and went to a restaurant and ate out. So as you can see, I have no gray areas. I don't want any gray areas going on here when it comes down to a uh, crunch time and dieting down for a contest. Once the diet starts, there's no cheating. There's no shortcuts, just pure dedication and hard work. I'm going to sound like a broken record if I told you why I put that sodium on my food. <laughs> so I'm not going to say it anymore. I'm gonna sound like a broken record if I told you why I'm eating this peanut butter. So I'm gonna bring that up too. All I need to do is eat. Usually, I sit down to have my food, but tonight, I'm hungry. Mitz, that tastes like um, 
apple pie, pizza, donuts, all put together. <laughs> I know what you folks are thinking. Chris eats like a pig. He eats fast. But if you're dieting for six months, you'd be eating this quick too. Look, miss, this container was food the other day. <laughs> That's how much peanut butter I go through. Okay. I think that'll do for tonight. Hmm. Is it still coming out, Mitch? Like I said, I love posing. But I better calm it down because it's 8 o'clock and I need to be in bed at 9 and if I keep going hard, I won't get any sleep tonight. More melatonin. I don't need none of that tonight. That's another day in the books. Another day closer to the road championships. I ate all my meals on time. I took all my supplements on time. I took all my protein powders on time. We had a good posing session, good workout even with the shirt off and um, I'm ready for tomorrow another day we wake up at 4 30 get things rolling first meal in at 5 a.m. you probably know the routine 5 8 11 3 you know how it works so let's pack it up tonight mitts and call it a night it was a great day I feel good and uh, let's see what we can do tomorrow good night Saturday the 6th, and it gives me 21 more days to keep my head on straight, like Eric said, and uh, keep everything the same. I'm gonna be in the gym again all day. I think I got one break from 8 to 9, that's it. I'll be training all my clients right through to 1.30. To like get ready to train. We kick it up at 1.30 today. Though. Today's Saturday, so it's 12 ounces of chicken, a cup of spinach, ooh, and you know it, baby. My one cup of packed jasmine rice that goes on the top. Don't forget about our, we're gonna be in the sun today, I know, so a little more added sodium. I was a bit um, worried yesterday about my conditioning, but I know it's uh, three weeks away, so I'm not gonna push any panic buttons yet. I know I'm on target, I know I'm ready to go, so I'm not gonna push any pa panic buttons. I just wanna keep the fullness, which I still have. Get short, intense workouts, nothing crazy. <laughs> and uh, stay focused. Ice pack there. A couple bottle of water doesn't help, you know. My trusty purple cooler, which goes wherever I go. If I was a rookie at this game, I'd probably be stressing out and panicking about the conditioning yesterday. And I'll probably take this out, which would be a no-no. I want to keep everything in, everything the same. 
three quarters of a cup. Well, that's going for two minutes. I think I should sit down this morning. Relax, like you said. No stressing, mitts. No stressing. What's all this garbage over here? Oh, camcorder. Camcorder for uh, Korea. Relax, relax today. This oatmeal combo that I do every morning is what I use leading into the show. This is what I carb up on and fat load on. I work with good with carbs and fats combined together. So this is what I use backstage. Some people may disagree. Everybody has their own ways. You heard of peanut butter on rice crackers, you heard of baby food, you probably even heard of uh, drinking wine backstage. Uh, potatoes, rice, you name it. This is Chris Faldo's combination right here. And that's what I'm gonna be using in Korea. That's actually a really good combination. I like that. Tastes good, smooth. You can tell I'm hungry a bit. I could actually eat about 20 more of those. The egg whites and the oatmeal. That's how hungry I am. But that's all I'm limited to. So why complain? Just do it. Nine 
So he plays for St. Louis. Number one football team here in Hawaii. Sometimes you get out of the game last night. Um, like, I went to sleep at like one. One o'clock. Yeah. It's six o'clock now. Oh, yeah. he played last night. How, how long were you trained with him? I trained um, him just for the football season. So like, you might have a coach or someone helping like making a strength for the team, I, yeah. I assume. Yeah. So like, how come you come in here to pay extra money to get to Chris? He's the best. So you see the result? Definitely. Within like the first two weeks, I saw it. So like, you, you, you like to come in here to train? All the time. One scoop of waxy maize. Take it in before the shake. The protein powder. In 15 minutes, I want to take in the protein powder and one scoop of peanut butter. Okay. Bathroom all day. Constant. You're done with this one. Ice coffee and a regular grande coffee. Okay. This is my iced coffee, no ice, and a grande hot coffee. And this is the only break I've got today, so I'm gonna be buying my coffee now and uh, let it sit till 12:15. Same routine.
about a year. I've been training with Chris over two years. Okay. Yeah, maybe two and a half by now. It's good. The guy, uh, the guy's energy is contagious. He's passionate about what he does in the gym, and it, it rubs off on his clients. Absolutely. Form and technique are always right on point, and he's got that energy to train anyone. It seems like, but I learned so much from Chris, and he's ins inspirational himself. So it's a blast every time. My goal when I keep going with Chris about a year ago was to uh, was to put on weight, and I uh, started at 165, and I'm at 188 today. So I put on about 23 pounds. So that was, that was my goal, and he uh, he achieved it for me. So big success. I'm happy. Yeah. Um, with with Chris, he's helped me train in running and in cardiovascular much better by. Um, working with me with plyometrics and just building a, a muscle base that I have so that I'm stronger in everything that I do outside of the gym, in, in sports outside and daily life. It's awesome, very helpful. And yeah, don't hunch over. Was that nice? Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturday, Sunday is boring ass chicken. Oh. Really? Mm. Right, rice, chicken, chicken and spinach. It's good. It's, uh, <laughs> doesn't it? At least you make it look good. Is that so for you? So my next client, Mitz, uh, used to work at Beverly Hills Hotel. General manager. Big boy. Yeah, sun's coming out. All done. This is Tim Lee. Hello, sir. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is my first client ever. Wow. Yeah, this, he's the he's the person that got me started in this business. Okay. And uh, and I'm still with him. <laughs> general manager at the hotel. He's from LA, so he was at Beverly Hills, but then uh, the Kala stole him back home. So. Let's see. Never did compete. Ugh. I was Chris' first client, and uh, six years ago. Um, for a good solid year and a half, and did great results. But then I moved to um, Los Angeles to manage some hotels, and then I decided to come home. And the first thing I did when I came home on my things to do list was to call Chris and um, hire him back as my personal trainer. Working in hotel work, it's a lot of hours and stress. And so with that, I, I always combine health and fitness, and it's a lifestyle. So Chris was the first one I called back because it's important, and he pushes you, as you can see. And uh, it was the best thing I ever did. I think it all depends on how, what, how much you put into it. And the results you get is depending on yourself. You have to have discipline, you have to um, have a one and, and, and have a healthy, you have to know if you want fitness. And so I, go, I get up every morning at four, I'm at the gym at five, yeah, and uh, it's just a part of life. It's a routine, and I think it called discipline creates habit. So, yeah, I wouldn't do it any other way. Overtime. You know, this is the Lady Delta that you shot. Princess. With Richard Chamberlain. Today's uh, just back 
do some back end uh, some calves. Nothing crazy. Some reverse rolls next. Wow.
piada. Stay in, Lori. Okay.
That's good. Wow. Oh boy.
Some calves too. Go 
Yeah, my nails is legs. Lazy man. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to start dinner without you. Oh, somebody been in my peanut butter. You, honey? Sean, he don't eat fish, right? You gotta yeah, order he's bringing something else. He eats fish. He doesn't eat shellfish. What do you mean shellfish? I just saw the Yanagi card right here. But I have that on there right there. Because Lori wanted a spicy scallop. Connie, uh, you got to scratch off the model because we have. Uh. All right, why don't you pick up? What would you like, sir? No, I, I said I'm Miso butter fine. fish no, or I, salmon tonight? What's I, salmon tonight? I, I'm fine with this. I'll take out order, please. Big dish of... Uh, Nigiri, yeah? Uh, Spicy scallop. Here. Four pieces. Yes, four. Four pieces spicy. Make that six. Spicy scallops. Six kane. Six ama ebi. Uh, you want hamachi sashimi, honey? Uh, yes. Hamachi sashimi. One spider roll. Uh, deluxe. What's this? Spicy what, huh? Spicy hamachi roll. Hamachi roll. Spicy. Yes. Uh, rainbow roll. I need um, three miso yaki butterfish, two salmon, yeah, broils, two piece, yeah, one order, and uh, yakitori, chicken yakitori, no yakitori, hi, um, soba, zara soba, yeah, one zara soba. Okay, that's all. Uh, Chris. Hi, uh, across the street. Wasabi on the side on all uh, nigiris, please. Oh, uh, you can deliver it to 37 floor. Oh, come on. 
20 minutes. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, Mitch, you got a feast tonight, buddy. Zaro Soba! Oh. Wow. I would like that, Mitch. Did you go down to the shishi? Hey, cheers, come over here. Give me a cheers with my spoon. Cheers. Cheers, cheers Chris. What's the girls? Peanut butter. Girls. <laughs> Sean was out of it okay, today. So she did my face first, right? Yeah. I said, oh, do you have anybody that can uh, do pedicure and manicure, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, I do. Actually, you can come back and and I'm like, okay, lobster and Terry had this day. They didn't cook my lobster, it was raw. And I was just like, oh my god, this is just like. All done. Till 8 o'clock. Okay, here. I'm gonna look what that thing is. That was good. Good meal. The girls are gonna get this their the uh, extensions <laughs> done by Sean Nakama. He's a hairstylist. And um, the blondes are all coming over to. Fix their Look hair. At this Please don't put that in a video. Not only that, you're gonna get drunk. These girls can party. Mitch, you're gonna be partying with them while I go in the bed and sleep. <laughs> Not only do hair, but they like to eat and drink and be merry. You put these three blondes together, and it's over. You know? Um, two weeks ago, it was Lori's birthday. So Debbie, Lori's mom, Jamie, Lori's friends, all went down to the Kahala where we're going tomorrow, oh, Kahala way, Hotel, I mean, and rented a room and got plastered. Then they went to Aloha Tower with, in a limousine, and Lori's mom fell down because she was so drunk and cracked her skull open. Chaos. Bleeding all over, scratches on the arm. So when they drink, girls gone wild. <laughs> Four girls coming over, Mitz. <laughs> You're gonna have some fun tonight. <laughs> 21 days. Tomorrow I'll tell you 20 days. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Okay, here. Okay, here. Okay, here. Start writing. <laughs> no, no, no. Start no, 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 no. I'll keep bowing. Can we do our interview over again? I line up. Why is there a interview over again? We're having a blonde hair extension problems. party over here at the house tonight. <laughs> It. I must be tired of it. Damn. I got some yolks in there. It really needs help. They don't mess with it. They really do. Why are you hurting Maybe I should do it like Mark Dugdale. Huh? What yeah. does he do? Yeah. He just drinks it. He doesn't cook it. Oh. oh, that's gross. No. He puts it on his cereal. Then you get diarrhea. <laughs> diarrhea. Diarrhea. <laughs> Mitch, you're not catching all that, are you? <laughs> all right, all right. You gotta edit all that out. No, I can't. No, I can't. Oh, God. Is that why Chris was saying to me yesterday? Diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, Chris? <laughs> Let, let's hear it again. I'd like to hear that. What was it? Yeah. What was that? You said diarrhea kind of about yesterday? Some kind of diarrhea song or something. Sing it to me. Come on. No, no. Belt it out. Come on. Come on. You said it so fast. Come on. Don't be shy. Come on. Miss, you're trying to get me into trouble. All right, all right, all right. What is it? 
I don't know. to Costco. No, Sam. And I went to Safeway. The ones I was using the last couple of days are from Safeway. I better use a Sam's. Hi, where'd you get these eggs from Sam's? Yeah, yeah they're a lot bigger. Yep, a lot more, yeah. Up one day, I'm telling you. Take this out, I'm dead. You can see I don't drink. Mm. What the heck? How do you oh read? How do you release the cork? So then you lift it back up, put this on like that, clamp it down, push this this way, clamp it, baby. Clamp, it baby. clamp it, pull it through, there you go. <laughs> Mitch, this has become an X-rated uh, video, X-rated video now, huh? All right, Jamie, you Sorry, you need some more? No, I'm good, yeah. boss. You sure? Come, you want some more? No, thank you very much. Okay. Tell me when. Oh, that's when. I'm going to do more to that line. Oh, yeah, that's good. Gotta keep going. Oh, that's good. Cheers! Woo! Honey, sure? I'm good. All right. 
This is all ready for tomorrow morning. Mitch, tomorrow, 6 o'clock. No, 5 o'clock tomorrow. 6 o'clock, wake up call. That's all, folks. The day is down. Another day in the... Another day down. Tomorrow I'll be seeing 20 days, right? Or is it 21? No, tomorrow's 20 days. Hold well on. I'm not gonna do the dishes because they're having a party. They party? They do dishes. <laughs> Alright, let's enjoy. Come on. <laughs> Yes. 20 more days. 20 more, 20 days. more days. Oh. Same routine. 20 more days. It's Sunday morning, October 7th. Or is it the 6th, minutes? 7th. <laughs> All I know is 20 more days, and I uh, uh, Sunday usually wake up a little later, get my breakfast in me at six, an hour later, so everything is pushed back an hour. So I'll be having my breakfast at six, shakes at nine, lunch at 12. You know the routine. Let's get it going. Oh, the women party last night, but they cleaned up. I like it. Very good. Pretty good in the morning. How's these legs? They're coming out. Twenty more days. A little harder today. A little harder. She put everything away again. Today's a non-training day, so maybe a little less. Just a bit. I want to stick with the same game plan. We'll see what Eric says tomorrow. We'll spot check again at 3.30 after my leg workout and uh, see if he's going to eliminate anything. As he said, we're only gonna change one variable, whether it's nutrition or cardio, if I need any. Hopefully not. I don't want him to eliminate any of this food or add any more cardio, so. I'm trying to stay focused. I'm trying to let my mind think that I won't be changing anything tomorrow.
Oh, another breakfast down. 19 more to go. <laughs> When you get a chance to sleep, better be a good girl. Okay. Back to work. Ugh. Ugh. You got at least three more this on ten. Well, I'm up, Tim. Ugh. Again, good job. Ugh. She's upside chest. Ugh. You need to remember this guy is coming, we're coming to California next year. Okay? One week before the USA. Him, Eric, and Lori. We must have taken all three. Let's get this going.
is what I mean by, you know, it's sodium. You know what I mean? The last part, that's what it looks like. Kind of worry. It even look like that on stage, ever. <laughs> Easier than a secret pot. Mm. What's all this? What's all that? That's it. Well, Sunday evenings we have a gathering at my mom's place, my mom and dad's house, so I won't be having time to make my egg whites tonight while we're all at mom's house, so I'm gonna make them now and put them in containers and get them squared away. So when eight o'clock rolls around at my mom's place, I have my egg whites ready and I have my breakfast ready for tomorrow. That's why I'm doing it now. Sunday afternoon. Ah, 
it would be really easy for me to stay home tonight and just relax, but like I said, our family is very close and every Sunday, mom and dad wants to see, see their kids. So that's what we do every Sunday. We get over to mom and dad's house and um, everybody brings over food and we have a gathering every Sunday, which is really good. Our family is really tight. And uh, just because I'm on a diet doesn't mean that <laughs> I can stay home. I like being with them and spending time with the family. So that's the only time I get to spend with them on Sunday. So that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. Um, so Sundays is a day of relaxation. But I still need to be prepared. You know, I need to have my food with me. Already uh, making sure that I got my watch up, my tea, my supplements ready to go. I packed my peanut butter right there. I got my cup of rice in this container. I got my lunch and my spinach ready to go. And since I'm gonna get home a little later, tomorrow is steak and, uh, steak and uh, more spinach, I got that ready. That's gonna be ready to go tomorrow. So all I do is come home and just get right to bed. No fooling around with uh, preparing of meals for tomorrow. Got that ready to go and uh, tomorrow morning, bright and early, 5 a.m. again, so. And that's just part of being a champion. You gotta be prepared. You have to be prepared and get everything ready ahead of time. Otherwise you're, like I said, gonna be empty handed and probably missing meals or missing something, you know, and I don't want to be caught shorthanded. There we go. 24 egg whites. Breakfast for tomorrow. For tonight. And mom's. Let it cool off a bit. You guys staying home tonight? That's my mom doing the cooking right there. You just give a wave, mom. And that's my dad. That's my oldest brother, Mark, right there. That's my other brother, Wade. That's my sister, Sherry. That's my side of the family. And that's everybody here. Like I said, we all gather here every Sunday at mom and dad's house and get together, potluck. Eat, have fun, and uh, talk sorry every Sunday. So nothing too much is special. It looks like special. Nothing me, special. This is not a party. It's just get together every Sunday. Yeah, we do this every Sunday. Nothing, nothing special. Nothing special. No, every Sunday we get together and. The family just talk story. Wow. That's what said. And the mommy do the cookie. Oh, <laughs> oh everybody, uh, potluck, bring in uh, all kind of food. I'm going to eat first before all the food comes out. Oh, that's Sandy. That's Sandy.
My name is Edward Faldo. I'm Chris's dad. I'm going to be 65 next month. Oh, he was a little rascal when he was young, but uh, the mommy took care of that. <laughs> the mommy straight enough, but every time he was naughty. And that's why he came to be a real good uh, young man today. I give the mommy all the credit. Well, every time he goes uh, to the team universe and uh, uh, world championships, uh, my wife, uh, Jenny, and I uh, try to follow Chris. We went to China with him. We went to uh, uh, Finland for the World Games, and that was real nice. Um, we, we all went to New York this past trip. Uh, he had a, we had an entourage for about, I guess, about 22 people. And was uh, all these people that went on was uh, Chris's real close friends. Um, we had a blast. We had a real good time. And we was uh, so happy that he won and was, was really, really, really happy when he won the overall contest. In, in less than two weeks, I think we're going to leave for Korea. And that's going to be uh, something new for us too. We haven't been to Korea yet. Uh, I'm excited to visit the place. I've been watching some Korean soap operas and trying to see what the place is all about. But when we get there, uh, it's going to be strictly bu uh, business for Chris, as usual. And hopefully he does well there too. Uh, we're all ba uh, ba uh, hoping that he does good. I hope he wins his, uh, his uh, weight division, at least. <laughs> And while well, I hope the best for the whole USA team. As you know, Chris hasn't won the first place yet, so this year we hopefully this will be his year for him. He worked hard at hard at it for the last oh how many years he been this? Twenty something years. And uh hopefully this is the year for him. He started when he was fourteen years old. Uh he was playing baseball and we were thinking to see him in the junior varsity games um, in high school, but one day he came by and he says, uh, Mom and Dad, I want to do uh, bodybuilding. And at that time, we didn't know anything about bodybuilding. So we told him, okay, are you sure? He says, I said, why is it that you want to do that? And he said he wanted to go into a sport that was all his own. And he wouldn't, if he made any mistakes, it would be only his mistakes and not anyone else's. Like in a team sport, you have to play as a team. But um, in bodybuilding, it's all about you and your lifestyle and how you train and how you eat. And so this is what he wanted to do. He was 14 at the time. So we told him, okay, how do you want to get started? And um, uh, we bought him a set from Sears, a uh, beginner set of barbells and weights. And he would, every day after school, come home and train. And one day I just said, uh, I think Chris, you need a trainer to help you because you're going to be on um, this, this beginner set. So we, uh, I took him down to Timmy's gym, which was um, in downtown Honolulu and uh, talk with uh, Mr. Timmy Leong, who was a bodybuilder himself, and he had a, a gym. And um, he said, okay, we can start training. And he gave me uh, what you call um, uh, a book that had all nutrition and how to eat and uh, the calories and the fat count. And it was sort of like a Bible. So that started it all he started to train and then with the training came the dieting the eating um so there was certain ways you had to cook for him and then eventually he was on his way he took mr high school back in i forgot what year but that was his first contest uh we we went with him to the ymca and at the YMCA, there were like a lot of contestants. And his first year, he made the top 10. And he was so happy by that. So the second year, he said, I'm gonna do better. And if you know Chris, that's all he looks at is number one. So he trained for that and um, took Mr. High School. And he was like, I think, uh, what, 16, I think? 
I'm not sure the age, I've forgotten already. But then um, that started everything. And then he, start, he wanted to get even bigger. But um, we knew about how these people get bigger by, you know, the enhancement, steroid enhancement. But he made a promise to mom and dad um, that he would never touch uh, any kind of drug to get to where he is and that's that's how it started <laughs> and look at him today world champ <laughs> to us he's a world champ regardless uh, if he's just got the bronze medal uh, silver medal in the world to me I think he's a champion altogether because of the way he um, attained it you know it's not something very easy to do um, Everybody knows that. It's very hard. Hard life, but it's his lifestyle. And now he's 41. I can't believe I have a, a son that's 41, but um, he's way up there. <laughs> and now he's going to try to get capture the goal this time in Korea. And that's in about uh, two and a half weeks. We go up and um, he has a strong following. And we're so proud of him. Mom and dad, the whole family, we're just so proud of him. This is not a party. This is just a family get together every Sunday. Shaka. Oh, that's a uh, kalu pig and cabbage. That's chili. Some chili. <laughs> and that is uh sugoi's. ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
This is my muffin. Which one? You show me which one you like. How much money is this one? This one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good? Okay. It's another meal. What is that? This looks like what? Hold on. A house? Nineteen days. Nineteen more days. I'm in my teens. And I'm gonna stick with the same game plan today. So this is lunch, getting ready for lunch, right? Today is a uh, Monday. Steak today. Yeah. Nice pack. Lunch is ready to go. Oh, that's one cup. That's I would love to have that. Today is a big day. Every day is a big day for me. October 8th. 19 more days to go to the World Championships. And uh, I'm feeling good. Sugar Bear feeling good.
This is what so. I use on the airplane going over to Korea or whenever I travel. And Dr. Paul Ho um, got me a box of these. Oh no, it's the same. It's, you get it from the drugstore. Oh yeah. And uh, actually Chris came up with it, you know. He's, he's been doing this for a long time. And you know that they say that on the airplanes because of whatever it is that people get sick. And yeah, yeah. It does happen. So he's being smart about it. I know, I and mean, it looks a little funny. So, but he doesn't mind, so whatever it takes to win. I look like a surgeon. Yeah. You know why? Because I'd be doing some surgery on those competitors. <laughs> uh, this, uh, whenever I travel, not only to the um, universe, but whenever I compete, this is what I wear on the plane the entire time. So I guess Dr. Paul Ho described why I'm using these, so I never got sick, knock on wood. Good. Um, I think this helps me out get to my destination without catching a cold because you know how susceptible the body is when they're traveling on the airline. It's just confinement in the cockpit, so body's immune system is very low, so that's the reason why I'm going to take all precautions and do what I need to do to get there to Korea in top shape condition. All right. Just step forward, down, up, and then over, and then move the same thing, okay? Just like that, see? You don't want to put hands on you. You want to hold your side right there. That's perfect. All you want to do is go straight ahead and visualize you got to put your hand on And back. Feel it in the butt. Hatcher? Uh, six years. Because he's very hands-on, he's very knowledgeable. 
He's, he's I, good. I mean, <laughs> yeah. He's a very good, very good trainer, though. Kind of hard, but very good, though. We're going to move five. One meal closer to the show. If I win the gold medal in two weeks, boy, I don't know. That's a hard one. I know I'm gonna come back and rest though. I need to rest. I'm gonna take a one month break from training and um, maybe go fishing. <laughs> maybe go down the beach, but we'll see. I don't think I'm uh, ready for the IFBB yet. I was still trained, but as far as competing, maybe one 210 under, huh? Maybe one 210. Hopefully the Ironman has a 210 and under soon. Are they having one at the Ironman? Two, yeah, you know that, only at Europa, right? Why only there? We'll see. We'll see how it goes. All I know is November, October 27th, after the show is done, 28th, I'm going to eat a pizza. Do they have pizza in Korea? They just got to have something. A Pop-Tart. Pop-Tarts are my favorite. Pop-Tarts. Strawberry Pop-Tarts. Oh, I could eat a whole box right now. Maybe some ice cream, maybe some donuts. I'm ready to eat. I'm actually ready to get out of this gym for one hour. Okay. How about your banana muffin, bitch? Something I wanted to eat. <laughs> Train. There are 15 minutes. I just took down some of my pre-workout supplements. Leg day, so double whammy of some Joel. Gotta get a good workout in today. Legs are tough, so I keep it always for Mondays. <laughs> Here, if you bring it up, it comes, it comes fucking. 
fork says it's moving the tires like fire trucks. <laughs> so I'm just getting excited. Let's see how it's better down here. The tension is way better. Like all the water came off. I guarantee. Check the twisting shot. See, look, all of the air came in. I'm trying to do your shot. Much better, it's much better. Right, right here. Not really right there. See, see now, this is, what was, this is what you were missing right there. See that? See when you come in around with that bad boy over here? Now instead of, instead of split your upper and lower pecs, and just really trying to shred it out. Like this. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Hit that. See the difference? See right there? Nice, nice. It's nice to clean the water because my sweating is much right now. Get a little grainy right there. See right there? Yeah? Yeah, so now you're getting crushed right now. So. Okay, for the last spread, the most muscular, that's good. Sit on it, sit on it, all the way back. See over here, see the ball right through here. Okay, most muscular. Rock the legs, rock the legs, rock the legs. See right there? Better, yeah, Mitsu. About five percent, ten percent water came off, yeah. You can tell, yeah. That's the, yeah. Good man. Looks pretty good for being uh, flat. <laughs> I mean, if we're not having a pump, I mean, you know. Yeah. Crab shot. <laughs> this, I like this right here. I like that. That's the right there. Yeah. That's starting to come in real nice. All this in here, yeah. 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 175. No. 173. No. Okay. Get off. 172. No. 170. 170. Yeah. Okay. But I like how you look though. Glutes came in. Upper back came in. This is naughty. Yeah. So when I look at this, if he has, if you got about five to ten percent water, which is about maybe five pounds, yeah. that puts us at what? One sixty-five. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right now you're fuller. Maybe you're a little bit more shredded the last time, but you're a lot fuller now. So I like the look. We go back over there one more time. Yeah. So today you have a lot more vascularity. Huh? Yeah. That's it, good. You sit on your leg, good. You just gotta sit on it. Good. It's okay, right? Yeah. 20 days. About 27 is the first day? Okay, so 19 days and 27 is free. Yeah. Vascularity is much improved. Much improved, yeah. See? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is starting to come out. This is starting to happen. Yeah. This is how it's going. This is starting to happen a bit more. So, so just lock this in on. See, so you get cross-station, lateralis, anything like that. This, this is the difference right here. They didn't have this other day. Small details. Just kind of leave this down this way. Okay. Wednesday. Wednesday. Thanks, sir. Yeah. I know I was flat because I just came out of the uh, restaurant. Uh, to get ready to train so I didn't pump up or anything but uh, I feel pretty good I feel pretty full for being uh, <laughs> flat and cold probably some leg curls before we do some front squats some compound movements today's gonna be my last day for some compound movements leg presses uh, and uh, next week uh, Monday we're just gonna do some shaping movements like lunges and leg extension leg curls but this is it for legs I'm gonna just get more detail in my legs and uh, Hopefully keep uh, all the muscle size on me. So let's get get, get kicking. <laughs> you ready? All right, let's do this.
Now that we're warmed up, we're going to take it in the back into some front squats. to put some clothes on as you could see and the reason why is I don't want to scar up any portion of my neck the bar sits right up on my neck on my clavicle and uh, it's heavy and it also gives me a good support when I'm wearing two three shirts that's the reason why I cover up on top when I'm squatting I usually like to put on two three maybe four shirts when I'm back squatting also because if you notice I've grown a calcium deposit on the top portion of my neck where you can see that lump so I don't want to develop that lump any bigger than it is right now because it's pretty pretty nasty uh, I kept it to a minimum by putting on a lot of clothing while I'm squatting because the bar sits right there on that lump there and uh, I don't want it to grow on my neck <laughs> another lump so Maybe that's the reason why I'm always covered up when I'm training legs. Well, I'm always covered up anyway, training any other body part except for this week, which I felt very uncomfortable mitts doing. But hey, for the video, let's let it roll.
So I just put my shirt back and go on. Thank you, thank you. That's perfect. Go. Come on. Come on. Leg fight. Go. Come on. Good morning. Go. Back. Go. Back. Go. Back. Go. Back. Back. Go. Come on. Drive. Let's go. Bring it home. Back. Go. Come on. Stay tight. Go. Back. Go. Come on. Stay tight. Breathe. Let's go. Back. Go. Oh, you come on. Drive up. Eleven. Last day for compound movement, so we do a little bit more reps today. Put my shirt one more time. Yeah, thanks, good. It's good. Thanks. Come on. Yo, come on. Come on, now can do this for one month. Like break. Vacation, come on. Like break. Sep. Yo. Come on, set it up. Let's go. Yo. Come on, drive. Oh. Oh. Nice, come on. Yo. Oh. Come on, stay tight. Oh. Drive. It's last one, I promise. We're out of here, okay? All right. Uh, we'll see if you can five on the first. Kick up the 275. Five on. Okay, five on. If it's late, I'm just going to do a straight set, okay? When you get eight, it's good. Let's go to that leg press. Let's go. I got some waxy maze going on here. Some glutamine and some creatine combination. That's what I use in the middle of my workout. So uh, I'll give you one of my secrets there. All right? Don't tell me I didn't give anybody no secrets. Oh, 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 oh,
this. Let's go. Nice. Nice. Got one more. We got three.
Ouch. Sit, Lord, take him off the good. Nice. Let's finish this baby dog. What do you want?
Too much peanut butter. I'm not even going to get my legs up. Oh, 
That's a leg workout and an ab workout every Monday. Go hard or go home. Let's go do that 40 minutes of cardio. Get even harder and get ready for Jeju. 19 days, we're ready to roll. Here, eyelashes. Summit. You are. Thank you. You're very well. The sailor man, Papa the sailor man. <laughs> so as you can see, I haven't changed a thing in the in an entire week. You've been with you've been with me for an entire week, and I'm doing the same thing: same amount of carbohydrates, same amount of protein, same amount of fibrous carbs. And uh, that's my phone ringing. Could be my wife. Coach said I can keep everything the same. <laughs> so I'm good to go. I'm gonna be eating uh, my usual, not that. That's for you, Mitz. My steak, spinach. I think uh, laid out, like laying out in the sun yesterday kind of dried me out. Uh, still pretty full, good intensity, as you've seen in the gym today. I'm gonna keep everything the same. And I'll uh, get more color this weekend. And hopefully I bring home that gold, baby. I'm just thinking about the next 18 days. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like I said, you need to try this out. Green tea. Oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> Too hot. Twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. Twenty four. Put these two away. Eats a lot of eggs. No trick to this. No trick to this. Did it all. 24 eggs. Tomorrow's breakfast. You folks know the routine. <laughs> you folks know the routine. You've been with me for a week now in my house. You saw I've been doing my egg whites for a week. You saw my pad. You saw how I train. You saw how I eat. You saw my family. You saw my friends. You saw my job, you saw my work, you saw my dogs, you saw me walking my dogs. You saw me doing cardio. You caught Chris Faldway in action for an entire week. Kikuma. Eight o'clock, last meal for the night. Right there. That's hot. That's hot. I wish I could eat some oatmeal with this or some, some rice in there. Oh. Another meal down, another meal closer to the show. 18 more days tomorrow. I'm confident. I feel like a champ. And all I need to do is stay focused and visualize every single day. Hearing the national anthem, stepping up on that podium and receiving my gold medal. That's all I can think about. 18 more days. 18 more days. We're gonna do it. Guarantee. Hi folks, my name is Chris Faldo. Let's start from the basic. My name is Chris Faldo, known as the Hawaiian Hurricane. I got that nickname from the late Don Ross. Back in 1993, 
at the Mr. USA down in Santa Monica. That's a year I think Chris Cormier won the overall title. That nickname stuck with me ever since, and uh, I kind of like it living here in Hawaii, known as the Hawaiian Hurricane. I've been bodybuilding for the last 26 years. I just recently won the Team Universe overall title back in New York this past June and headed to, which qualifies me to go to Jeju, Korea in 21 days to compete in the World Amateur Bodybuilding Championships. This gang has been my lifetime goal to win the top, the pinnacle amateur bodybuilding show in the world. If you folks don't know, this is the reason why I keep going back to the team universe. is because I've been there before, to the world championships back in 94, which is in Shanghai, where I gathered up a bronze medal in the 70 kilo class, which is lightweight. Then back in 95, I got a silver medal in Guam in the 70 kilo class, which is the lightweight class also. It took me another, what's that, 94 to 2007 to move up another weight class to the welterweight class to compete this year. And hopefully I'll bring back that gold medal that I've been searching for. I don't even know where that gold, uh, silver and bronze medal is because like I said, second place is the first loser. So I don't, uh, I don't consider a third or a second an accomplishment in my eyes. Maybe to others there it is. A second place in the road is not too shabby, I would say. But to me, I was brought up always trying to strive for being number one. I'm very competitive. As you'll see in my video in the gym, I don't like to lose. I don't like to look bad. I always want to accomplish my goal every single day, every single workout, every single set, every single rep. No wasted reps, no wasted sets. That's what I instill within my clients and that's what I instill within myself. And that's a true champion, trying to strive for better and better things every single day. I started bodybuilding way back when, back in high school. There was this competition called the Mr. High School where we competed within all the high schools and see who had the best body. I picked up a bodybuilding magazine once and said, this is exactly what I wanted to look like back when I was like 14, 13, 14. And I left, never left sight of that goal. I've been carrying my cooler ever since. Even back in high school, I used to carry a cooler. Come to think about it, never had school lunches. Discipline, dedication and hard work is instilled in me. Accomplished many goals here in Hawaii. I moved over to the States and uh, won the Teenage Nationals back in 1985. And that's the year Sean Ray won the overall. So me and Sean became buddies then and we keep in contact ever since. He's a great guy, a great mentor. And uh, this year I'm going to be using at Jeju a routine that he stole away from everybody, just killed them at the 87 Nationals. So I'll be using uh, the Dream Girls version and uh, hopefully he'll like it when he sees it. Like I said, I've been competing and I won the, the most prestigious title was 93 Mr. USA lightweight class. That was when everything took off. I won 94, 95, 96 Team Universe titles, 2003 Team Universe and again 2007. And the reason why I took a break from 2003 is to create a better package. Everybody said I was retired after 2003. But when I competed against, uh, let's see, Jose Raymond in my class in 2003 and I beat him, it was by a slim margin of one point. I knew that my package wasn't quite there yet. So I wanted to fill out this welterweight frame to the fullest. And I think I accomplished that. Uh, this year winning the overall title it's been a struggle for me every day it doesn't come easy being a natural lifetime natural bodybuilder as you can see in the video I take I pay close attention to all details timing of waking up timing of meals portions of meals 
what time I go to bed. Everything plays a big part. Posing, training. I live bodybuilding 24 seven. It's my life, I enjoy it, it's a passion for me. It's a passion for me to train my clients the same way I train myself. Even though they're a beginner, I will train them to their full potential. And that's why I enjoy my job so much. I'm in the gym, I practically live in the gym, but it doesn't feel like work to me. I'm in there 6 a.m., probably out 6 p.m. and starting the day again. Yeah, I get tired, but it pays the bills. <laughs> I also have a printing company, which I own. I just retired from the Army National Guard, putting in 21 years service in the band. I played the clarinet. Yes, you may be laughing now. Yes, I'm a clarinetist. <laughs> and I also distribute a lot of supplements here in Hawaii. There's a lot of things that I do outside of the gym, and I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of uh, my wife who supports me. We've been married two years now. Debbie is uh, my, the backbone of my success. I'm proud to say that I have a very tight-knit family. We gather each Sunday at my mom's house, the whole family. And if I'm not there or any one of my brothers or, or sisters not there, she'll be calling us. So we need to show up every Sunday with a potluck full of food. And it's a gathering every Sunday. Even though I'm on my diet, it's still... And enjoy, it's so joyful to go there every Sunday and enjoy everybody's company. My family travels with me wherever I go. My mom and dad especially, they're very supportive of me from day one. In fact, my mom and dad bought me my first weight set down at Sears. I begged them, I begged them to buy me this weight set. 112 pound weight set with one bench, two dumbbells and one Olympic bar. I trained in my bedroom. I would put everything under my bed, drag it out every evening after school, set it all up, work out every day, put everything back under the bed so I had places to sleep, a place to sleep. And I did that for two years until they saw the discipline that I had. Then they signed me up at a local gym here in Hawaii called Timmy's Gym. Timmy Leong, very famous, Mr. Hawaii. And uh, he was a mentor to me back then still is and i trained at his gym for say six years then moved on but that's how it all started i begged my parents for this weight set and uh, i owe it to them like i said family means a lot to me if there's one thing that'll hold me back from the competition it would be something that happened with a family member that will hold me that's the only thing nothing else will hold me back from this competition except for a family member that is in, e in need. But other than that, uh, there's friends that here will travel with me, clients that will come along with me also. And uh, I'm very thankful for that. I have a great clientele. They're very supportive of what I do, how I do it. And I think it kind of feeds them to be motivated also. And that's why I'm very successful in what I do. It's a passion for me to go there and train them and they enjoy that also. My workout schedule is Monday, I do legs. Tuesday is chest and biceps. Wednesday is odds and ends with deadlifts at the beginning. Thursday is a complete rest day with a massage therapist coming over, which we didn't do this week since we're filming, but usually Thursdays are massage, acupuncture work, which I see Dr. Ray De La Cruz for. Friday, I'll be doing my shoulders and triceps, and Saturdays are back. That's a five-day split routine. That's only when I'm going for a contest. In the off-season, I'm training four days a week only. I don't do any type of cardio in the off-season. And when it's contest time, it's 40 minutes, five times a week also, taking a break on Thursday and Sundays. I'm very fortunate to have a very fast metabolism. So it's very easy for me to get hard, but very hard for me to keep my size. As you'll see here, keeping the peanut butter and the carbs and the fats in, to the, probably the day I leave will be the trick for me to keep on all my size. Keeping my repetitions down low, keeping my workouts to a minimum, not overdoing it, 
and just keeping my cardio intense but not too intense where I'm burning muscle tissue. I love what I do. Posing is a key for me. It's hard on me. I, I struggle with posing. I love posing, don't get me wrong, but it's come down to posing sessions. Half an hour sessions are like eternity. Eric Yamashita drills me posing Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays for half an hour. Then I'm doing it in my bathroom every night, what he's teaching me. He has a great eye. He works great. We work great as a team together. And he sees every little detail in what I need to do. And I trust his opinion. My workout partners are great. Laurie, who's training for the USA Figure Championships next year. Sean Nakama, Paradise Cup next year. I got uh, Chad Kikuta, who always works out with me on Saturdays. And especially my wife, Debbie, who's always there with me, not only in the gym, but outside of it also, just keeping me focused, supporting me, loving me. And uh, like I say, she's the backbone to what's going on with me here. I wouldn't be able to do it without her. And I love her very much for that. We travel together. She probably likes that. <laughs> Never leaving my side. So we work good as a team. She's a personal trainer at Ghost Gym also. And I see her every waking moment. I love that. She's in the gym with me. She's at home with me. And we work good as a team. The most memorial, memorable experience I had was probably the 93 USA. That was my first, well, second national show since the, te the Teenage Nationals. And the Mystery USA was held in Santa Monica that year. I'll still for I will never forget that moment. Everybody and their brother was there. I was competing against Sean Reese's partner, uh, Scotty Givens that day. And he was like the favorite in the lightweight class. There was Chris Cormier, there was Paul DeMille, Craig Titus, you name it, they were there, Vinny Galanti. And I came in with the most complete package as a lightweight that day. I'll never forget. I was shredded, hard, and in most amazing condition. I took that title that night without anybody knowing who I was from Hawaii. This little island of Hawaii. And the funniest part of that whole experience was when Lonnie T pronounced me as the winner. I grabbed that trophy and I jumped up in the air and shook it so hard that it disintegrated on stage. And they showed that on ESPN. I was so embarrassed. I'll never forget that moment. Jerking that trophy and it's just splattered all over the stage. That was the highlight <laughs> of uh, probably the career. Um, and until this 2007, uh, winning my first and only overall title, which has gotten me to that IFBB pro status. It's always been a goal for me to get a pro card, which I've accomplished uh, this past June in uh, New York. And uh, I broke down on stage, I'll admit it. I, I broke down on stage because I finally, after 26 years, you gotta imagine this, after 26 years of training for something, wanting something so bad that you can taste, smell, and touch every day and it's never there. And to capture that moment on stage that night with your friends and family members just screaming their heads off, it was unbelievable. I knew I was in great condition and uh, I had some stiff competition in the heavier classes and I didn't know I was gonna win until they, Bev Francis announced me as the overall winner and I dropped down to that stage and kind of broke down. It was an unbelievable moment for me. And hopefully, I'm praying that in 21 days, I'll have that experience once more. One more time. I need to do this one more time just for myself. I'm competing this and just for me. I don't do this for anybody else. I train for myself. I eat for myself. I suffer for myself. All that pain and agony is just for me. I don't do this for anybody else. Um, when family members are out partying or like you still see in the video where Mitch is down there having his tonkatsu curry plate or eating a spam musubi or my wife ordering a pizza. 
it doesn't bother me. I love watching people eat because it makes me strong as a person. It's that dedication, it's that perseverance, it's that hard work just to know that you can over overcome these obstacles. I, I strive for these little things. It's amazing. It's, it, it's something that I probably can't even explain. Um, I'm proud to say that I can overcome these obstacles. Probably you're looking at this video saying, what is he talking about obstacle? If you've been on a diet for six months, you would know what I'm talking about. It's, it's very hard to do, to stay in control and not to cheat. Once I start that diet, I will not, will not cheat on my diet. Uh, no matter what, not even a little slice of pizza, not another grain of rice that I shouldn't be eating. It's that critical to me. It's that that pushes me to know that I'm a champion every day. And that's why I broke down on stage that night. It's not just because I won the show. It's thinking back of all the days all those days that was so hard, like today's workout was so tough for me. I was tired, I was dragging, and yet I got through the workout feeling that I did my best. Even though it was, I say 65% of me, I still think that I pushed my body to where it needed to be to accomplish that workout. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud of to say that um, that's me, a hard driven person. That's my character, that's my motivation, that's everything about me. I uh, never cheat on a diet, like I said. I create my own food. I don't let nobody, nobody touch my food when it's time to start dieting. Not, us, not my family members, not my wife. I don't go to restaurants and eat. Once it starts, it starts. It ends, it ends, yes. But in the off season, most times I'm creating my food like in contests. And yes, I'll splurge here and there on Sundays with the family in the off season. But mostly Monday through Saturday in the off season is everything that I create. I'll go out occasionally with my wife. We'll go right across the street to Yanagi Sushi. That's my favorite. That's my favorite food is sushi. I love eating sushi, soba noodles. Uh, but on Sundays, like you see the family getting together every Sunday in off season, that's the time to enjoy and relax. That's the only day that I'll go get off my diet in the off season is on Sunday evenings with the family. Other than that, it's strictly chicken, steak, turkey, eggs, oatmeal, potatoes, rice, that's the staple in the off season. I love it. I enjoy feeling good every day. People ask me, don't you get sick of eating egg whites every single day? I'm like, no, I'm eating for fuel. It tastes great. I feel great. How much better can that be? You know, I don't want to be dragging in the gym at 6 a.m. I don't want to be dragging at 11 o'clock p.m. I, I don't want to be dragging at all. Did I say p.m.? 11 o'clock a.m. I don't want to be dragging through my workouts. Every single workout in the off season needs to be as more critical six weeks off from the show. That's how critical this is. People don't know this, but <laughs> I shave my entire body for the last 26 years and mostly every Friday. I never since day one, since I competed way back in high school, let my hair grow <laughs> for the last 26 years. That's how much I enjoy bodybuilding. So when I see these bodybuilders in the gym with hair on their body in the off season, I'm thinking to myself, what kind of bodybuilder is that? That's like a part-time bodybuilder. Or maybe I see him eating a KFC bucket of chicken on a regular day. It's not a cheat day. I'm thinking to myself, that is a, quote, part-time bodybuilder. I am not a part-time bodybuilder. I'm full-time bodybuilder. And I love it. People think I'm crazy, but that's what you call passion. Passion for the sport. And I, 
been very successful. I think I may be um, <laughs> the only amateur bodybuilder here in Hawaii and probably all around um, that has good contracts from companies, supplement company, endorsement contracts, distributor contracts, because I work hard for it and the companies know that I work hard and they want a representative like that. Yeah, I'm 41, but hey, I'm still kicking butt and that's all that matters. <laughs> okay. Um, if so happen, and I don't want to even say this, but if so happen, I don't get the gold at the Road Amateur Championships in 21 days. <laughs> this is on the record, huh? I'm really going to feel that I am incomplete, that I haven't reached my goal, the full potential, and I would have to live with that. Um, it's like Sean Ray, Kevin Lavroni, Flex Wheeler, who always knew that they should have won or wanted to win a Sandal, a Mr. Olympia, which they probably should have but did not accomplish. And you ask every single one of those, Nazar El Sambadi, Mohammed Makawi, you ask any of those bodybuilders if they're complete with their career. And I bet you a million dollars that they'll tell you it's not complete because they don't have that trophy in their hand. They do not have what Lee Haney, what Arnold Schwarzenegger, what Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler has on their mantle they do not have that i can guarantee you they will say their bodybuilding career is incomplete they did great don't get me wrong these people that i mentioned rich gasparis you know all of these bodybuilders did awesome in their career but they are incomplete because of that one trophy that one title that eluded them and I'm going to be the same way if that ever, knock on wood, they won't happen. But if that ever happens, which you'll find out in this video, how it ends, my career will be incomplete if I walk away in Jeju without that gold medal. I'll be happy with my career, don't get me wrong. I'll be so happy with what my accomplishments were, winning that IBB Pro Card in New York becoming a professional because there's how many bodybuilders in the world that while well, in the United States that actually strive for that pro card and I can actually say that I have accomplished that but to answer your question Mitch my bodybuilding career would be not complete without a gold medal at the Road Amateur Championship. This is my Mr. Olympia. I will never compete on the Olympia stage. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not built that way. I'm not going that route. Um, I'm a lifetime natural bodybuilder. I'm gonna stick with my morals and that's, that's my decision. That's, that's me, that's Chris Valdo. But I am not going to, it's not gonna be complete. This is my Mr. Olympia. It's my Mr. Olympia. And uh, to answer your question, it will be an incomplete story. A story with a bad ending. But it's not going to happen. <laughs> Pray to God, it's not going to happen. So that's the reason why you guys can see in this video that I am doing everything possible. Not just in this last week that you've seen in this video not in this is last week but in the last 26 years it's always been in the back of my mind or maybe not 26 years but you know you know what i'm saying it's always been in the back of my mind that i need to win this show and uh, i think i've got a really good shot at it if i stay focused in the next 21 days and do what i need to do to compete in this show I've been personal training for the last 10 years. I've got started uh, personal training from one of my clients named Tim Lee, which you guys will see in the video. He's, he's a Kahala Hotel general manager. And uh, he said to me one day, hey, can you train me? 
And I said, sure, you know, and that's how it all got started with Tim Lee asking me to give him some help and some advice and things just snowballed after that. I picked up a client here, picked up a client there. And as you know, I'm totally booked up every single day, Monday through Sunday. Sunday's a half, half day only. <laughs> so now I've got assistants working for me and um, my wife, I started her off and she's totally slammed in there also. So our business is really growing strong. We have a great, great group of uh, clients, which we don't even call clients anymore, we call friends. And uh, that's how it is. It's I live in Gold's Gym. I enjoy being in Gold's Gym. I enjoy my job. It's a passion, like I said. And I train each client individually to the best of my knowledge. I'm a personal trainer, certified personal trainer. And I take each client differently. I don't, I'm not a cookie cutter trainer. I train athletes. I train housewives. I train doctors. But each one come to me for a specific goal. And I take that very seriously. They're paying me good money to be trained, to look good, or just to be in the gym. And I need to pay special attention to that. And I think that's why I've been so successful here in Hawaii. My rates are not cheap. I'm probably the most expensive trainer in Hawaii. But it's, uh, it's a living. I love it. I love what I do. It's not work for me. I feel for people who wake up Monday morning and say, I got to go to work today. For me, it's like, I'm going to the gym today. I'm going to the gym. You know, it's, you're dealing with people that are so positive every single day. How much better can that be? I love what I do. I love training all of my friends. These are a great group of people and the new clients that are coming in, they'll have a blast too. Even though my schedules are all booked up, I make sure that I can spend quality time with everybody. So that's my job. I love it. They uh, enjoy me. Otherwise, they wouldn't be with me for all these years. I got clients that has been with me for, what, 10 years, like Dr. John, Dr. Paul Ho. They're um, great people. And uh, we feed off each other. Some days I walk in there and um, they teach me their, their jobs, you know, and I learn from them also. Okay. I have two great dogs. Well, I have one great dog. And I bought Sugar Bear, which is my dog, for my wife because she's been uh, a dog lover all her life. And I'll be honest with you, I hated dogs. I hate, I hated, I hated dogs. I didn't like dogs at all. And uh, Debbie grew up with dogs all her life. And uh, one day she asked me, can we go down and look at some dogs? And I said, no, I don't like dogs at all. So the entire week, she begged me. She did not stop begging me to get, go get a dog. I'm a teddy bear, so she broke me down. So I surprised her, I rang the doorbell, and I bought her Sugar Bear. Sugar Bear was a puppy. It was cute, but I still was afraid of this dog. <laughs> I bought her home and uh, Debbie was so, so happy for the first week until Sugar Bear followed me all over the house. Sugar Bear grew up being my dog. She follows me wherever I go. So Debbie recently bought Fifi, the Pomeranian devil. I never, that's why maybe I hate dogs because of the dogs like that. I mean. She bites Sugar Bear, she's all over us, she's <laughs> whatever that means. You know, she's probably saying, ah, you're an idiot, Chris. But <laughs> that dog is a terror. She will um, terrorize you. <laughs> so, and Debbie loves that dog, so what can I say? Um, they make me happy when I come home from work every day. Even though I have a, the shittiest day in the gym, like probably today, 65% to me is a terrible day. I would just open that door, lay down, and they will be all over me and I forget about what happened today. So owning a dog probably was the best thing for me. It makes me smile every morning when I see them. 
and uh, I became a dog lover. Now I know some dogs. Debbie, Debbie and I walk our dogs down to Doggy Daycare Center, which is right down the road. Uh, we drop them off every Tuesdays and Thursdays in the morning, and we pick them up from work. After we finish with work about 6 o'clock, they spend the entire day down at Doggy Daycare Center playing with other dogs, and they enjoy it. That's their free time. They run around crazy. They come home and pass out. So uh, it's very convenient for us to have um, a doggy daycare center right down the road from us. In fact, it's very convenient to live here um, in downtown Honolulu. I can walk directly to work, which is three minutes away, walk back home, have some lunch on my break, walk back, do more clients, train, come back home, take a shower, go back, train more clients. It's convenient. Restaurants around the area, the beach is maybe a 10 minute walk around, and um, the location is beautiful. I enjoy living here. It's like, uh, it's like heaven. Well, it's pretty close to heaven. <laughs> what can I say? This is heaven for me. I enjoy every Thing about living in Hawaii. Hey gang, how you guys doing? Come on in. Well, uh, let's see. This is my place. My wife and I purchased this about eight months ago. It's our dream home, condo. It's about 2,080 square foot uh, penthouse. So let me take uh, you folks around and you can check out my pad. This is the entryway. This is pretty cool. I kinda dig this, this is a picture at, uh, what do you call this, huh? Fish tank. <laughs> Plasma TV is really thin. Oh, you don't want to take that, Mitz. That's all, like, that's all Debbie's shoes. She loves her tennis shoes. <laughs> This is one of the half baths, bathrooms here. Uh, I don't know if this is deep, but this is uh, a storage room. Keep all our junks. Keep my uh, grandpa wagon. <laughs> Debbie's totally into uh, HDTV and getting everything perfectly in sync. So this is her oasis, we call it. From the water fountain to the colors of the walls. Uh, let me take you to my master bedroom first. It's right here on the right. see my baby right here, Sugar Bear, loves my bed. Yeah, Sugar Bear? <laughs> Sugar Bear and Fifi Girl. They both sleep with us. I'll show you the view from here. This is the best part of the house. That right there is Diamond Head. If you can catch that, Mitch, that's Diamond Head. Ala Moana Beach Park. So we're up on the 37th floor, <laughs> overlooking downtown Honolulu. <laughs> to our left here is Punch Bowl. It's beautiful at night with all the lights of the condos and the homes here. Punch Bowl is right there on the left.
the master bathroom. I think this is the best part of the bathroom here. The jacuzzi, which I never use. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> I get dizzy in the jacuzzi, always, so I feel like vomiting every time I get in the jacuzzi. Could be because of the heat, I don't know. We pick up that sketch statue in Rome on our honeymoon. There's a picture of us uh, at Arc de Triomphe. We went to Paris, we went to Rome, and we went to Venice. This is Debbie's walk-in closet, which I don't know if she wants me to open. But she gave me this closet and she's got the walk-in. Debbie and I like to entertain our guests and families when they come over. So we looked for a condo with an open kitchen to the living room. So we thought this was really, really nice. We either eat here on the kitchen counter or up on the bar every night. This furniture right here, it's from the store right down the road called Z Interiors. We got some of it from Inspirations, which is down the block also. That's my competitors. Locked up. <laughs> this is where I do my laundry. As you can see, I need to do more. <laughs> There's another bathroom here, a full bath. I need to tell you a little story about this bathroom. I know all you bodybuilders out there have this special place that you pose. Come on, you know that's true. Well, this is mine. Right in the middle of these two squares where this X goes. I come here usually after I eat my meals and spot check my body. So it's right here. Perfect lighting. Check this out, Mitz. So I'm usually posing here every night for about 20 minutes. This is where I do my thing, right here. Puddles of sweat. So, hey, what can I say? But I know that everybody has a perfect posing mirror, and that's mine. This here is another ba uh, bedroom. So Debbie has a 10-year-old son, and he's into Spider-Man. So we kind of made his room into Spider-Man, a Sp Spider-Man theme. As you can see the view, it's a wrap around 360 degree of the entire island. It's beautiful. The rather sculpture of, um, what does that look like? Maybe Sean Ray after he took fourth place at the Olympia. <laughs> Don't put that in. This here is our work room. This is where I do all my uh, all my office billings and uh, all my work. This couple of the pictures that uh, were in magazines and this here was in New York. My fan club right there. This is my mom and my dad. My beautiful wife right here. That's my brother and his daughters. 
So if you look really closely, you'll see Gold's Gym, how close it is. It's right down the block. That's where we come from. Right down there. This is my wife, Debbie, on the computer. This is the most recent win right here, Mitz, right here. So this is my class win at the Team Universe and then my first and only overall trophy. So I told Debbie to leave a little space right over here because I need to put one more. In 21 days, I need to have one more over there. <laughs> These are just some of the cover shots I got. Yeah. I'm making Christmas cards. You're making Christmas cards? Oh, I want to see this. It's so funny. I got the ones that should wear them. So that's basically it. That's my pad. Well, our pad. Our pads, yeah? Sugar Bay Fifi Girl. So you seen my place, you seen how I train, you see how I eat, so get out of here. Frozen. What's up with that? <laughs> no problem. Just put it in. It'll defrost. No stress. Another frozen one. Okay, we're switching containers here. Nobody said I was neat. But uh, if I don't clean up, my wife will kill me. <laughs> Best thing about living in a condo is getting the rubbish, right? Follow me, Mitz. I don't even have to wear shoes. See, we just come this way. And right to the trash chute. How easy. Whenever the wife tells me to take out the garbage, no problem. <laughs> That's going to be for, um... Throw away. <laughs> Don't tell my mama that. She would kill me if she saw me throwing that away. How clean this kitchen is? Oh boy, if I don't keep it clean... <laughs> she'll be all over me. Look, Mitch. I guess I don't need this anymore, huh? Uh, IFBB Pro, I need to get a, a, a IFBB Pro card now. <laughs> Guess where I am? I've done long day shooting Chris Powder in Hawaii. I got a great treatment right here. Chris had a beer. For me, it's Heineken. Yeah. And I got. Uh, what is it? Jalapeno, edamame, what is it called? Uh, chili, chili pepper. Chili, this chili. is for you to show you an edamame. Sorry, that's okay. what I'm going to show your wife that. She's going to slap you in the head. Why did you bring me? Look at this. Yeah, she's going to say, why wow. did you help me? Look at this. And, and the butter feet. Wow. <laughs> what a piece right here. Great, look at this. Now Chris doing a laundry. Okay, oh, yeah, everything clean. I mean, like, what, what is those? Uh, the balls? Yeah. That's so it um, makes it dry faster. Makes it dry faster? Yes. Is that dog toy, is it? No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that's dog toy. It looks like dog toys, but... Yeah, chew toy. Actually, my auntie in LA got me these. Who? Who, who got it? My auntie in yeah. Los Angeles. Huh? had some of those, so I asked her, what are those? She said, that's to make the clothes dry a little faster. I think, I need to ask Debbie. I mean, that, that's a chew toy for the dogs. It looks like they yeah. want a chew toy. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing already? 
She said that, uh, what is those balls? Yeah, what is those balls? In the laundry. Oh, they're, in a, um, that they're chew toy. That chew toy. A chew toy. No, it looks like a chew toy, but it's a yeah. downy ball. So it stops static cleaning. It is that downy clean. ball? Is yeah. called? Is this downy making? Um, I don't think downy makes it, but it's a different company, and it stops static cleaning and makes your um, everything soft. I'm gonna sound like a broken record if I told you why I put that sodium on my food. <laughs> so I'm not gonna say it anymore. I'm gonna sound like a broken record if I told you why I'm eating this peanut butter. So I will bring that up too. All I need to do is eat. See, I'm looking for a big spoon. <laughs> Mitts. <laughs> How about this one? <laughs> not to eat. Yeah, this is good, oh no. I was thinking more like my rice paddle, you know, but I better stay on the conservative side. I'm going to push the cart. Why? A uh, couple weeks ago, I was pulling the cart, pulling the cart right here after everything was done. And I hit the heel of my shoe with the back of the cart while pulling it and it spilled all over the ground all of my weeks worth of cooking all of my food so what did i do went to the market and had to start again marination <laughs> bagging of the chicken marinating it coming down here cooking it again cleaning everything up but you know what that's what it takes that's what i gotta do no shortcuts shortcuts get you nowhere Shortcuts get you second place. And you know what they say about second place? That's the first loser. And I don't want to be in that position. No pulling. Push. Push. Check it up, baby. This is a good operation going on here, Mitch. Whenever you're in Hawaii, you make sure you stop off at the Hawaiian. No, no, no. Check it. <laughs> Try again. Cut. Cut. <laughs> Cut. Take two. Whenever you come to Hawaii, you make sure you stop off at Gold's Gym of Honolulu and stop by my cafe, the Hurricane Cafe and Juice Bar. Here, right at Gold's Gym, you may get. No, you can't have my wife. You can get the, a beautiful. Panini chicken breast sandwich. Should I order something for you, sir? Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, oh, come on. Uh, lemon. Shut up. Lemon. Lemon. <laughs> I want to order some lemon. I got, I got a ramen here. Ramen. We don't have ramen. I got, yes, I got ramen. We don't here. have ramen. This is full. <laughs> we don't have ramen. We only have lemon. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Just put it back and shake it. Why is there so much though? Not big deal. But there's so much like stuff. Maybe you put a little bit too much water. Yeah, I think so. This is my iced coffee, no ice, and a grande hot coffee. And this is the only break I've got today, so I'm gonna be buying my coffee now and uh, let it sit till 12:15. Same routine. And this iced coffee is for you, Mitz. Thank you, sir. And tuna sandwich and banana nut muffin. The reason why I said that is because they think that's for me. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Foro, what are you doing? Uh, the everyday things of life. Doing laundry. Folding clothes. Even your wife's? Yeah. She went to do her nails. Oh, nails. You know, manicure, pedicure. So. I got the house duties today, Sunday, house duties, <laughs> house chores, it's okay, it's okay.
spits. See the kind of shit I get from them? Huh? I knew I was gonna get shit. <laughs> do it again, do it again. <laughs> Let me see. Alright, alright. I'll see you more like the other one. Now you have to do this before you start your exercise. Alright, all right, let's get this game kicking. She would be upside down right she now. She would be more critical. She got her teeth in it, but I think she got tired of it because she was eating this. You are in big, you are in big trouble. Hey. Oh. We, did, we did nothing wrong. It Good night.